Oh man, I had the best intro and it messed up somehow in the recording process. So we gotta do it all over and I don't even mind. What's up everybody? We are back with episode 58 with one of the smartest people I've ever met. Her name is Danny. She's in the Mensa Society. What's the Mensa Society, you may ask? Because that's what I asked. I knew it was associated with like really smart people. But that's as far as I know because I'm not one of those smart people, obviously. And it's like uh, the Mensa Society is like if you're in the top 2% in IQ. Like if you take the IQ test, get in the top 2%, boom, you're, you know, up there, right? You want to be with other like-minded geniuses and they created like a little club, if you will. Uh, anyway, so we talked about that. Wow, she's really smart. I hope to get her back on the show and talk more things. Uh, we got into like, like string theory and IQ and the differences of that. Um, arts, artists, artists in Kansas City. She's starting up this uh, artists, this Kansas City artist based um, social media platform. And it's really cool. And I'm getting behind her with that. And we talk about that. We talk about this thing that I we named. Uh, I think we named it black hole projection theory it's like there's a whole theory about the universe and life and like whatever it's nuts we get into some nutty things wow this was fun this was fun you guys i know my podcasts lately have been goofy and silly because i'm a jackass and i like to drink and have fun but i'm here to tell you i can do serious too i think i did it pretty pretty all right i mean it wasn't me it was so much her she's the smart one i just uh let her talk really I think, from what I remember. See, I don't remember. I do these stupid intros way too far past. I do the little too inside baseball. Guys, I'm rambling. Here we go. The most controversial podcast in Kansas City, you guys. That's us right here. And it's episode 58. Enjoy. Boom, shalak, boom. Welcome to the Inno Talk Podcast. Will no topic is off limits. Now here's your host, my daddy, and Roida Soul. Oh wait, one more thing for me. Thank you for coming to the po- podcast. Boom to what boom. We're gonna go live in three, two, one. But we're not really live. I almost I almost did this one live today. I almost thought about doing a live stream. Okay, so so I just lost my producer. He had to quit on me. Not in any bad terms, no bad, you know, like, he's welcome back anytime. But he has some stuff going on in his professional life that he uh, he has to focus on. And so now all his spare time, what little he has, is going to his kids now. So now I'm going to have to, like, run cameras And do the podcast at the same time until I find myself a new producer. Which I also have someone that does help me out from time to time. But she wasn't able to make it tonight. My name's Ryan, but you knew that. We met the other day. Your name is Danny. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty okay. I'm a little tired from the driving, but other than that. How long of a drive was that? Two and a half hours or something? Uh, About with the traffic, yeah. Okay. So we hooked up on Bumble Business. Mm Mm-hmm. And I was looking for podcast guests, as I uh, like to do. And I kind of came across your profile, and I had some words in there that were smart words, like smart people words. Sorry. A oh, couple good. of mats in there. Was, but now I can't remember what it was because it was so long ago, and I haven't been on on there. What was your pro- What were the smart words? Was Mensa or something like that? Was that a word? Uh, I mean, or I put like a list of like my qualifications, but yeah, I guess so. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I am asking that, yeah. Um, so I had listed out uh, Mensa, National Merit Scholar, Hispanic Scholar, Missouri Scholar, and the Presidential Service Award. Yeah, that seems like a whole lot of good stuff. Uh, I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty decent, yeah. Can you explain what that is, starting from? Is that Those are all separate things, Those right? are all separate things. All right, yes. let's start from the top. First of all, what's Mensa? Because so, I know I've heard that word before, uh-huh. and I know that it's associated with smart people and accomplished people in school. But I don't, I'm, I'm, I dropped out of college. Mm -hmm. So community college at that, you know, I'm just, you know, I don't know anything. 
I mean, to be fair, like, Mensa doesn't really have to do with rewarding any sort of, like, academic anything. It doesn't really have to do anything with school. Um, Mensa is essentially a high IQ society. Oh, my I see that. Yeah. Which is why it's, like, associated with smart people. But, again, like, grades, intelligence, education, intelligence aren't necessarily correlated. That's why I, I was just thinking about, yeah, IQ stuff today. Uh-huh. About how it can be judged, but that doesn't really... Like the IQ test or something. That's just one form of intelligence. There's all kinds of intelligence out there that doesn't necessarily mean you're book smart or you're math smart. I mean, mm-hmm. like a really talented musician mm-hmm. or, or, or any kind of artist has a really high IQ, but it's like a different kind of IQ, right? Mm-hmm. Are they, would there be like, would they be considered in that kind of realm with you guys? A Mensa? In the met, what, oh boy, I don't even know how to use the vernacular, how to use these terms. I'm gonna catch that gnat. I see that gnat coming around. I'm gonna snatch that thing out of the air. Okay, sorry, I keep going like this. No, is just, I'm I see sorry. it like in my peripherals. I don't, yeah, this is the second podcast, uh, second time this month. He's following the coffee. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Shout out to Esquipula's Coffee. That's it. Shout out to them. <laughs> um, let's see. So Mensa, in order to qualify, you have to be in the top 2% of the um, IQ in the world, um, which, you, which can be determined by taking a sort of standardized IQ test. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like various ones that you can take, but they're, they all essentially, I think, measure more or less the same things. Um, it's not really like a school test in which it's like, okay, like who is the first president of the United States? Like do this math equation. Like it's, a memorization type thing something different it's more i don't want to call it like abstract thinking um because i also don't grade it i don't know how i was graded but they do like um one of the tests that they did was they gave me a little picture book and it had like a sequence of patterns on it one two three four five and then i had to pick out the sixth one so like which would come next in the pattern and like at first it was like okay this is pretty obvious like this is fair and then it got more and more complicated to the point where i was just like well you know what i can't explain this when you're thinking but like here's my guess um part of the test was like uh the lady who administered it I had it administered by my high school and she asked me like okay I'm gonna give you two words and you tell me like not how not like what they have in common but um like what do they have to do with each other like and then she would say something like lake and mountain and then you could be like you know there are different like geographical formations like you can find them in nature they're um blah 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 and then you just have a list and i i don't really know what that tested but like it's that kind of thinking that it's testing. that sounds like a really fun test it low-key is it was like three to four hours though so like but 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 would take again i mean you can always take it they do um, who can take it do you have to take a test to take it no anyone can take it there is like a fee for administration like they do for like the sat or whatever like if you want to take it get up on that mic if you want to take it oh it's okay it's like um you can move it around too if you need to just whatever okay however just yeah sorry um so like the sat like if you anyone can take it anyone can sign up there's a fee to administer it especially if you want to have it like administered by a trained scorer or whatever i don't know apparently you have to be like qualified to score these tests an Um, sat no the uh any iq test like a valid one i think it's 60 to 80 dollars oh that's not too bad it's not bad if you want to like if you really want to know you know it's like a whole lifetime thing since supposedly iq doesn't change the older you get yeah that was another question of mine like kind of so you they you tested at in high school at that high school age mm-hmm. so but people don't your iq doesn't change i was curious about that it's just kind of it's it doesn't change that one what, what, when's your peak iq and you're like all right this is what i am i so I don't know a lot about that, but to my understanding, it stays relatively the same. Um, I took an IQ test when I was in elementary school and then one again um, about halfway through high school and I got the exact same exact same number. Is it a different test when you're testing younger people? Um, I think so. I think they have different ones for like kids. Okay. There's like, I don't know, the list that they accept is like 15 to 20 different variations, but supposedly it stays around the same. It's more about like relative brain function than it is about like knowledge or wisdom i guess okay but i agree with you like i was actually having this conversation about iq um about a couple weeks ago which was like you know what's to say like who's that like what is actual intelligence 
and like right again like you know because <clears throat> i can answer those questions and apparently get into the society but i could never create something like mozart or like i can't just i can compose some music that's very basic but not like the really cool songs or lyrics that you may hear in some of like today's artists and that's a special kind of talent like being able to create a painting for memory like that's an incredible sort of achievement of the human mind that for some reason isn't grouped into like intelligence quote unquote and like Mm -hmm. emotional intelligence as well like being able to read and interact with other people like that's a specific talent that really does have to do with your brain it's not always necessarily a learned skill right um i don't know i agree that Hmm. there are different types of intelligence i'm not necessarily sure why this one qual like the general iq intelligence quotient qualifies as like the overarching most important intelligence measurement but i don't know i'm not an expert i'm not right dictating that well, but it's, a, it's just a it's like a club a society what exactly how would you describe or is it just a? I mean what exactly is it it's not like a secret society we guys have a secret handshake do you and you meet in back rooms and like hey this is where the smart people come and play chess i mean i don't know about that not <laughs> not that i've been to any meetings but like maybe you know maybe they have like their like gowns and stuff right? and they do some sacrifices like hey like lords whatever give us some (laughs) back some intelligence but some owl god or something some owl god yeah some ancient greek god some god from mythology we've probably never even heard of but someone knows about you know right um no it's so they have like a website i guess with like different members um they do they have like a newsletter stuff like that they have like their own little magazine where they'll like send out like really interesting articles or whatever but they do a lot of meetups so around the country there's like so there's an international organization and then it's like divided up by countries or regions and then within those countries so like US Mensa would have like different regions I guess. Okay. This Missouri would be like Mum Mensa which is like Mid American Mensa. Okay. It just happens to be like located in Kansas City which is convenient enough but they do What do they do here? Um the one in Kansas City is low key very it's super low key. They just have like a book club and like a game night once a month, but it's you go there and meet up with all the members in the area, you know, chat, have food. Enjoy so the it's just a bunch of really smart people getting together. Based yeah, and they just get together and just hey. Yeah. Hey, we're so smart. We're done. We're you know, we hang out with stupid people all freaking day. Just one day a month, I'd like to get together with some smart people that I can understand and talk to. So let's do that. Is that what it is? Kind uh, of? I don't know if they... I mean, they're not going to say it like that, but I mean, that's probably what it's probably like. It's probably weird to be really, really, really smart like that. Smart, way smarter than the average person and have to deal with, you know. Uh, I mean, not necessarily. It's not... I wouldn't say any of them see themselves know. as any like higher or anything. <laughs> like, it's definitely... Yeah. I've been going, my mom applied and also got in a few years ago, and I've been going with her to, like, their meetings for the last few years. Like, that's how I spent my one Saturday night a month in high school uh, was going to, like, these game nights. and What kind of games? Uh, Can I guess? Yes. Okay, I'm going to guess. Chess, obviously, I have to guess it. Yeah, there was always someone in the corner playing chess, yeah. Go? Go. I don't know what that is, so no. Oh, boy, that's, like, even harder than chess. Seriously? Mm-hmm. There's something harder than chess? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's many things harder than chess. And did it... Uh, it took longer for AI to figure it out if it did figure it out. Oh, well, I got to look into that. I cannot remember if, if AI's figured that one out yet because it's figured out chess. But I don't think it's figured out Go yet. I don't know. I don't know much about it. I just know it's a different game. It's, you know... I don't know. Look into it. It's just called Go. Okay. Where were we at? Where was I going? Uh, you said chess. Uh, what other games? Oh were yeah, there? we're give, oh uh, Stratego. No. Okay. I mean, they're really basic ones. Really? Yeah. All right, I'm good. I'm, those are my kind of another game. I don't know. Uh, uh, Boulder Dash. No. Okay. Shoot, what would they play? I mean, they had like chess, checkers, battleship. Definitely Scrabble. Every weekend there was Scrabble. Oh, and obviously. Catchphrase. Sh- yeah, yeah. Catchphrase. I've heard of that one. Oh, I love that. That was fun. Ooh, how about, uh, what's that one that everyone likes? You know, the card, Cards Against Humanity. No, no Cards Against Humanity. Right, could you imagine that? I mean, it's, the thing was, like, at these meetings, everyone was probably 50 plus at the game nights, and I was, like, 15, so I don't, I don't know if 50 plus is, like, the demographic for Cards Against Humanity, you know? No, it's not. No. But they're the ones that need it. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I think it would have been pretty fun, but definitely would have been very awkward as like a teenager to be in a room with all those adults playing cards against humanity. Now it'd be super funny. How many, is there like a number of people that are in the, is it called the Mensa Society? Uh, what do you call it? I just call it Mensa. Just called Mensa. So how many club members of Mensa are there in Kansas City or the Mid-America, whatever? Um, I don't know. I think Roughly a couple like, thousand. Oh, it's pretty big. So, so one or two thousand, yeah. Hmm. But they don't always meet up. I only remember ever seeing like about 20 people on rotation at these game nights. So right. I don't really know. I I like joined so I could low-key just put it on my resume and stuff, but I haven't been super active in it. You know, I get their newsletters and stuff, but I'm just like, okay. What kind of people are these? Like, are they doctors, lawyers, teachers? What, like, ocu- what's typically their occupation at these meetings that you would say? To be honest, I don't know, because last time I went, I was probably, like, 16. Um, and you're, 15. what are you, 20 now? I'm 20 now. So it's been enough. It's been enough time that I don't really remember, and I never really asked them about that, because I was always, like, super shy talking to so adults. Like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense, especially yeah. 50-year-olds. What's a 16-year-old need to talk to a 50-year-old Yeah, I, about anything? Yeah, it, it was like it was like going to Grandma's house, and, you know, except you had, like, 20 grandparents that were all asking you questions and you were just like oh my god I don't know I don't know what I want to do with my future no I'm not seeing anyone like I don't even know what to ask you back but that's what it was, that, that's what it was like once a month but it was super fun yeah mm-hmm. you learn a fair. lot no yeah I don't know it's just good really... for just looks good on a resume yeah and like in their newsletters are pretty informative and like um you know I'm sure in a more populated like higher member area there will be more events or something. I'm hoping that when I go back to VC, I can join that one and see like what's up, good for networking. Um, but yeah, mostly it was just like a little resume booster. Are you political at all? Yes. Oh, really? Yes. What would you say you do? Like, wh- how do you participate in politics or? Uh, how do I participate? Let's see. I actually went to school in DC to a political school to study politics. I got there, I took a politics class. And then I was like, oh, my God, this is so effed up. And then I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I quit that path. Really? Good for you. I just, I was always like. But is that the problem? Is that the problem, though, that we don't have smart, I don't know. Do we have smart people that are in politics that are like, are there any Mensa members in, in Congress? I have no idea. I honestly, I'm pretty new to this society. Like, I don't have a really what's in yet i only joined a couple i'd like to know that wouldn't you like to know kind of that should be public knowledge what people's kind of what our public officials or whatever what their iq levels would be or how they would score they should all be forced to take the iq test the iq test and we should all know what like that should be a requirement what your iq is what do you think would happen if they had like a high iq does that necessarily mean that they'd be good at the job no, but I want people with a high, higher IQ to run my country, probably. But then again, we were talking about earlier about that test. It'd have to be a different test. Mm. Yeah. But it still would be nice to know. How about just nice to know? It would be nice to know how qualified someone actually is rather than just how charismatic or how much money goes into their funding or stuff like that, you know? I like numbers, too. So I would like to see what the average IQ is of those people. And, like, who the lowest would be and who the highest would be. Would there be some surprises? Like, either or. Is Trump actually way smarter than you guys really think he is? Or is he? No, he's, like, way dumber than you think he is. Like, or, I'd want to know that, these, too. Yeah, I'd right? want to know that, like, too, to I be honest. Don't you want to yeah. know Donald Trump's oh, IQ? Yeah, I, I definitely I definitely do. I'd be interested. Yeah, I mean, like, if we don't know his taxes, how are we going to know his IQ? Oh, like, he, would never, he would never. No, he would never take that test. All he would say is, it's big. It's, it's big. very. I took the big. IQ test. It was the look. I did the greatest of IQ tests that anyone's ever taken it before. <laughs> believe me, you got to believe me. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. The people that <laughs> gave the test were the greatest people on planet Earth. Make America great again. Just don't. Just believe me. Believe me. It was the best. It was the best in history. That was beautiful. That was spot on. <laughs> I, I'm sure that that is exactly how it would go. Like, oh, can we see it? No. <laughs> but yeah. So. Um, in terms of political participation, to be honest, um, Trump was elected while I was uh, starting my career. And after that, I was like, I don't really want to like graduate and work for this ad- or under this administration or like a low key hope was lost. And I was like, I got to find some other job. Uh, so I kind of stopped being as politically active around then, which, you know, is counterintuitive. But 
I know it's bad to say like, hey, I don't like care about politics, but I just every time I'd open I the think news, that's it's so like so good. I think it's so good to not care about politics. I just I hate it. It's just so divisive. And there's, I mean, I I guess politics on a grand scale. I think if you're gonna care about politics, care about local politics where where it means something. You know, you, you we everyone wants to vote for the president, but I mean, come on, our vote really doesn't mean a whole lot. At least not when you're compared to like the local level when you're voting for the mayor. I mean, when we just had a mayoral election, mayoral election, whatever you call it, and hardly whatever the percentage of population was that voted on it was tiny. Like you know, what, I don't even think it was thirty percent of people who were able to vote voted. I don't know anything about local politics but right but if you're gonna get political and 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 i don't know be political i would think it would be on a local level if you're gonna care about it you know what i mean for anybody not just you in general i just so many people bitch about trump and and the big politics but yet they're not voting on the smaller politics that actually you know you got to start change from somewhere you got to start small when only 30 30 percent of the people are voting that's a problem and you can't really affect any kind of real change. So how are you, if you can't even focus on more than 30%, how are you going to focus on the country? I don't. That's true. I don't know. Maybe I should start looking into local politics. I, I just, I hate to say this, but I don't, I don't really know what there is to care about. I'm not pushing you that way. I'm saying in general, I think it's good. Yeah. I don't care about politics. I think it's just a nightmare. I get wrapped up in it. Okay. Sometimes. So what about you? What are your, are you trying to go there? Trying to go where political? Yeah. Where? Anywhere. No, I'm. I don't. No, no. I'm, I'm too stupid for politics. I just don't care about it, and I'm too opinionated on some things. What's something you have a big like a uh, a big opinion on? Uh, I'm pro gun. Okay. Um, I'm pro. Um, shit. What was I gonna say? Oh, pro speech, one hundred percent. And I think we're we're slowly losing that. We were talking about Absolutely. the other day. I mean, maybe that's a good segue to kind of bring up what you have going on. Or do you not want to talk about... Can we talk about that? What you talked to me over uh, drinks the other night. Uh, about my company? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you want to know? So you're building like a social media platform. Yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a social media platform that's... Uh, locally based and it's meant to connect like artists musicians creatives businesses entrepreneurs individuals whomever within 50 miles of kansas city to one another yeah pretty straightforward even though i said it in like 20 words but yeah that was really fast but thank you so it's basically artists can use this platform to and you said you took like the best of all these other social platforms and combined them into one yeah so basically um about a year ago, so I've been taking a break from, break from college for about two years, and when I came back, I was like, you know what, I'm really bored, I'm going to learn how to build a website, and I was like, okay, what do I care about, I was like, you know what, I like my art and music, I'm not doing it as much, but like, I would love to have a place to share it that's not like Facebook or whatever, because I don't know, I'm private about that, my music and like, the people that I see every day, I don't really want to share that with them, that's not my audience. Um, I get it. So Other I, artists are yeah. going to understand it, and, and you probably feel safer yeah. in that kind of environment. It's just, it's... For me, it's always been like a more private thing, Mm -hmm. you know? And And those people that will seek it out, they'll seek it out. It's like letting someone read like, I don't know, almost like your diary, but like in music form. I I don't know how to... Sure. No, I get that. Yeah, yeah. Music's very personal Mm -hmm. for artists. I mean, yeah, it's it's the most personal thing they have and they're putting it out there. Oh, yeah. It's, It's a form of vulnerability. Like, hey, I made something and like I'm putting it out in the world for other people to take a look at it and essentially like judge it you know well not only that a lot of artists are i don't know maybe a little more sensitive to normal people and they and they also are putting their life out there like their story Mm -hmm. like they're not just always making stuff up a lot of it is their personal like some of the greatest songs are like heartbreak songs you know what i mean who doesn't like a good like adele is like one of the biggest artists ever because you know she keeps getting broken up with and making beautiful songs about it poor thing oh wow Poor, poor thing, you know, wiping her tears away with, like, $100 bills. <laughs> like, oh, I'm so sad. Right. Uh, well, yeah, it was basically that. So I was like, you know, if I'm going to build a website, I'll make it for art. And so, like, I started building it, like, pretty rudimentary. And then I was, like, I started researching art in Kansas City. Turns out it's, like, um, the mayor 
ta- the mayor's task force for the arts was something created in like 2011 by Mayor Sly James, and like they outlined a report that was like, okay, Kansas City's got like the third biggest, largest like art industry in the country behind New York City and DC. Now now it's changed a little bit since the report. But what, what's that mean, art? Like what what's what constitutes as like art in that sense? Like as far as the art cities or whatever. Well, I assume like they they include like nonprofit industry too. So like you know, um, I don't know why I said you know, but like they include like nonprofit. You know, we have I don't know exactly, but I know Kansas City has the highest concentration of visual artists from between the coasts. So like maybe it's also like how many people practice, how many people are employed by the industry, like how much okay. money is spent here and how much money is like produced. I don't know if you knew this, but like ninety to ninety eight percent of the economic impact in Kansas City is actually produced by the creative community of Kansas City. Over 90% of like our economy is run by artistic creative tourism in Kansas City. What is, like what does that mean though? Like I assume it's like festivals, um like events, uh hmm. the cultural like cultural and artistic organizations that go around. I don't know. I assume it's all of that put together. 98% 90 to 98. I can't remember the exact number, but it's definitely 90 or above. Or maybe it's 88. I, I would think, think I would think this uh, Royals and Chiefs probably pull in quite a bit of money. I don't know. That's I just where did I read that? That wasn't in the mayor's task force for the arts. That was in um, it was somewhere else. I'm not sure, but it's it's like a major I believe economic it. impact. I like so you said you're not. What the funny thing is, the ironic thing is, is you're not a big social media person yeah, yourself. That's pretty yeah, that's pretty ironic, isn't it? Yeah, very. I'm just not a fan. I. I have no interest in it. I like my life being private, but I... That's rare for people of your age, but not people of your IQ. I, I don't know about that. I mean, I, I'm i sure... It's That's what I'm saying. That's my theory. People with high IQs aren't on social media. I don't know about that. Yeah. I, mostly because, you know, me, I, people don't go around posting it. I know I'm. I know I'm dumb being on there. Like, if I was smart, I would get off it. I mean, I was off of it for a while. Not off of it, but I deleted it off my phone for a while. And then I really just do it just for the podcast. I was like, well, I got to promote it and market it or whatever. So I have to at least have something special out there for my guests. Or or not for my guests. Sorry, I was reading that. I was like. For my listeners and stuff. So, and just to build it. Because I want more people to hear this conversation between you and me. So I had, I I did, uh instagram basically just for that and then i still get wrapped up in it because i I had facebook for a while as everybody did and i would just find myself you know flipping through all day just scrolling through stupid shit through people who i don't know who i haven't seen in 20 plus years and i'm like just seeing what their kids are doing seeing what what they had you know what, what vacation they're you know what i mean you know what facebook is everybody and i just found myself like what am I doing with my life? Like, I like to be outside. I like to hunt. I like to fish. I like to look at the stars. Why am I looking down at this thing, you know, 12 inches from my face? with pe- You know what I mean? And so I deleted it and didn't go back. And then I started doing the podcast. And I made a post that said, I'm just using Facebook just to shamelessly pimp the podcast. So I don't get, I don't scroll. So the best rule of thumb is just don't scroll. Just post. Post and delete that's my suggestion for using social media post, post and delete post and then delete don't delete the post uh exit delete exit out post and exit how about post and exit off post and s- exit post and exit off the website or the app if you got facebook up and you want to make a post put your post up blah 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 had a wonderful time with uh danny from uh, the podcast here's the picture and then exit out of the app and then be done with it I like that. Because if you start scrolling, you're going to get sucked in. They make it. They design it for that. You must know that. They spend millions of millions of dollars designing how to make these things ad- more addicting, more addicting, different, how they're going to force these little algorithms, algorithms. And it's to piss people off, too. The more hate there is, the more they gear that stuff towards you because it's going to get that reaction and you're going to react with it and you're going to interact with it more. And that causes more people, more eyes and more interaction means more business and more advertising. And And so small emotional triggers, rage, happiness, dopamine from that like button, whatever it is, it's the little Mm -hmm. burst of that. I, I don't know, not a, 
super big fan like it's I don't know to be honest like the reasons that I'm not really on social media like I have a Facebook you know I haven't changed my profile picture in like three years I haven't posted in like three years um Instagram I have three pictures up there I don't know how I have followers like but whatever um and then Snapchat because people like to talk through that oh and then I read it but I only got that after I deleted Facebook because on Facebook, honestly, I deleted Facebook because after I graduated high school, everyone started getting engaged and married and having kids. And I was like entering like a mid midlife panic. And I was like, nope. Uh, Mid midlife panic. Panicking about what? Not being engaged or anything? uh, No, it's just like. Or on that path? I, it's just crazy to think that like you're getting older because like sometimes I like see myself and I'm like I'm still a kid you know I'm still in high school but then I'm like oh no you know I'm gonna have to go to a friend's wedding like oh my god I know people who like can't hang out anymore because they have children like they made another human being and I'm just like I'm at that age I'm not ready to be at that age I don't want to think about that uh um, you got you're a child you can't even drink yet exactly you but some fi- people have kids my so best some friend from high school got engaged look, like I ha- I'm 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 an older gentleman uh-huh. and I have my oldest kid six you know, I had him, you know, I'm 39. I had him when I was 33. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I think there's, I, I, I'm glad I waited. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, sure. If I would have had a kid at 20, that's not cool. That's a, that's, do you want a kid right now? Do you know what that would do? You, you're, I do know. you got goals. Yeah. You're ambitious. You got, you don't want that lifestyle. You don't need that. You have way too much. You got way too much going on. Like you can't, you can't waste what you have going on right now on that which is something that can come much later and is going to be mean more and it'll just it'll come together let these let these kids get married at 20 just watch it last i mean i don't see anything i don't see anything wrong with it you know like i don't see anything wrong with it yeah i do i do i see something wrong with it i do i think you need to live life i think those are ages that you're going to get older and you're going to look back and be like Damn, I was married and I mean, I don't know. I I just don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm I'm judging, thinking or projecting, I guess, what I think a high school s- sweetheart type marriage would be. Like I can't imagine it lasting if it does. I would think it would be boring and tr- I don't it's not for me. I don't know. I don't know. It's just Sorry. <laughs> Like, my, so I have a half-sister who lives in Mexico. She's 11 years older than me. She's, uh, how old am I? So she's going to be 31. And she has been dating her boyfriend since she was 14 and he was 16. They got married at 24 and 26 on their 10-year anniversary. They have four kids now. They are, like, happier than ever. I know. That's the thing. You do see that. You do see a higher, I think there probably is a higher percentage of high school sweethearts that stick together than probably random marriages. I bet you there are. But still, what's their percentage of success? Or yeah. Well, I don't know. No, what does it matter? I, it's, your, it's your journey. Yeah. It's your journey. It's like life is a unique experience for everybody. Yeah. Like a career doesn't have to be like your career profession doesn't have to be the focus of it. In fact, I actually disagree with that. Having like being the focus of your life, like build your relationships, your family, like yourself, the activities that you do outside of your job, man, like get a hobby, go outside, go hunting, like spend time with your kids, like build that because that's a unique experience of life other than like a nine to five job where you're where you a lot of times have to spend your day but life is much more than that i trust me i know i trapped myself that was the one thing i did myself nine to five nine to five trap because i uh because i have kids now mm-hmm. and so i can't give it up i have a good job steady income i've got all i've got you know, all the stupid things they trap you with you want health insurance here's great health insurance oh you want holidays here you go here's sick days Here's a retirement package. You know, here's decent money. But here's all this stuff. All you have to do is, you know, this is how much. And you just come in here every single day and do this every single day. But, I mean, look at you. You're much more than that. Like, that's not who I tra- you are, I, you know? Right. But it is. I wish I could do. I wish I didn't have to do that, obviously. That's true. You know, it's just, it's just this trap. And if, yeah, if you don't have kids, you can get out of that trap much easier like i have kids so i can't i can't say screw you post office i'm gonna go move to the mountains to idaho and be a a hunting guide or something like that and do what i want to do is that what you want to do i think that'd be dope but i got i can't do that it's just why not i got two well 
I'm divorced with two kids. Mm-hmm. Hey, ex-wife, I'm moving to Idaho. I'd like to take the kids with me and live there. Uh, how would you like to move to Idaho, too? I mean, there's got to be some wilderness <laughs> in Missouri, like drive an hour, pick them up on the weekends, drive them back or like whatever. No, Missouri's great. I, I, you could be a cave spelunker. I would never. No, I would never. That doesn't interest me. That scares me. But not, mountains I, don't like heights don't, but like caves do. That's claustrophobia in the dark. It's just what are you gonna see? You're not gonna find anything cool. Everybody's already. It's, here's here, here's the thing. It's already been explored. You're not gonna see anything new. Are you gonna see something new in the mountains? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I guess you're gonna like see some. Stuff. You're gonna see some rare stuff. You're gonna find, uh, not necessarily even. Yeah, the mountains like in Idaho, um, it had a very high population of different uh, Native Americans. Really. Oh, yeah. The, I believe the Nez Perce was like a really big tribe up there. And just imagine, I mean, you can go in the middle of Idaho and go from there straight to Canada on all public land, meaning there's no private land. You can just anybody can go out there. I mean, that's just miles, hundreds and hundreds of miles of just wide open nothingness that anybody can have access to and just go to. You don't have to ask permission. You can just do it. I really need to think back to like ninth grade geography real quick. I'm not so Idaho's like mm. in between like it's got that little like tall strip right. So it's like Montana, little strip of Idaho, and then like Oregon, Washington, and then Canada, right? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. It's that. Okay, it's the little it's the little weird looking thing. Yeah, yeah. Sh- yeah. Okay, okay. I, I when you said like you could go straight to Canada, I was like, I was like thinking it was like where Nebraska was, and I was like, hold on a second, that's nowhere close to Canada. But yeah, geography is not. I don't know. I'm not wonderful at geography either. Maybe you have to go into another state too. But that's still like going to that be public. Sense, that, but that's still like public land that you uh-huh. can access. You ever been to Yellowstone? No. You no. like nature. You like like. I love nature. Guiding. Why not like work for Yellowstone? Why not work for a national park? That's a pretty legit job. That has benefits and stuff. Yeah, as I was saying, like I'm trapped. I I've got two kids and I'm divorced. You know, when they get older. I'll be eighteen someday. Yeah, and then I will be older. You can retire like Ron Swanson, you know, in the middle of like <laughs> nature in your little cabin. Like you don't have to see people. You just oversee the national park, drink your uh, coffee bean water. Yeah. There you go. Like, like coffee bean water. Yes. Almost there. I have to work on my mustache. I can grow to. I can grow a mean beard. But not mustache. Is that like? I mean, I can get a. Mu- I mean, obviously, I okay. can, it comes with it, but it's not like a Ron Swanson like, boom. It's just uh-huh. not a real thick. I can't shave everything and just keep a mustache and it not look ridiculous. Uh-huh. It doesn't get I mean, that, like, shape, you mean? Like, the really, like, full bushy? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't get super bushy. Okay. I don't know. It's, But everything else looks good. But what I'll do is I'll grow it long and then I can curl it. So I can at least do that. Oh, my God. You would do, like, the little handlebar yeah, mustache? Yeah, just like... Yeah. Please do that. You know yes. How, yeah, please That'd do that. Cool. You know how long that takes to do? That is a serious commitment. Curl it or grow it out? Grow it out. Because you have to grow it out long enough to get to curl. It takes a long time. That'd be like a miniature little beard, but only like the two strips, you know? I yeah. feel like that'd look weird if you didn't curl it already. You just have like two little s- strips of like hair. I don't know. I'm such a psycho. I uh, I, I seriously thought I get, uh, I guess I have like a, hmm, a very competitive nature and also an addictive personality. And so sometimes when those things combine, you can get you can get some good stuff with that. Like I was a, a pretty good athlete, um, but then I, I would get like I, I was watching this Beard Wars. Of course, that's a thing. Okay, of course it's a thing. <laughs> that's amazing. What what is it? It's just these dudes that grow beards, and then they go and enter them in like these competitions, and people judge on who's got the best beard, and they do different things with them, like. Like do the handlebars or, you know, they cut it, shape it different or or have it braided. Just, you know, it's just you've got the best beard, dude. You win. And there's this guy that wins like all of them. He's like the beard king. And he was just like this arrogant. Ba- I don't know, like this arrogant prick, really. I didn't like him at all. And he just kind of like kind of acted like a badass just because he had this beard. I was like, your beard ain't all that, dude. You just. Grew it, whatever. I think anybody could do it. And so I, I got into this real thing in my head going, fuck that guy and fuck these guys on Beard Wars. I'm going to start going after. I'm, I, I don't, I, why not? I can grow a beard. Let's do this thing. 
And I started going it, and then, you know, eventually you're like, yeah, all right, I, I, it's too much work. I don't feel like doing this anymore after like a year or something. And like, well, beer, Beard Wars, I got into that phase for a little bit, but it shouldn't really be going out. <laughs> What's the work behind it? Like, what do you have to do to maintain a beard? Are you kidding me? Oh, shit. Um, uh, I mean, no, I don't have, I don't really have experience yeah, yeah. with maintaining okay. facial hair. Let so me, like let me explain. Uh, so growing a beard takes a lot of work because, well, there's different ways you can go about it. You, let, let's go about it from a single man standpoint that's trying to date, get dates, right? Okay. It's pretty hard to get a date with a crazy beard. A lot. It's, it's, you, yeah, you're, you're narrowing, you're narrowing your dating pool to a specific you know yeah most of the time yeah if you know a, a big especially a big crazy beard not a lot of women are into that no you know <laughs> no so you ha so if you're a single guy you have to kind of outweigh like all right do i you know am i trying to attract females or am i trying to uh you know who you attract with a nice beard what are you talking about like nice beard here or like a gandalf beard just if you, just in general, if you have a nice beard, do you know who you attract as a man? Women. Other men. Oh no! No no! <laughs> what? Not gay men either. Uh, just uh, not. Oh, they not just want to like compliment way, your beard. But <laughs> you get it, it, people who like your beard are other dudes <laughs> all the time. Like I, that would be the biggest compliment I would have. I went to this one party at this bar and this uh, this. Dude's wife was talking to me, going, "Oh my god, my uh, my hubs, my husband is obsessed with your beard. He loves it so much. He wants to know if he can touch it." I'm like, "I go, you can touch it. I'm not letting him touch it. That's weird. I'm not letting another dude come touch my beard." She's like, "Oh, I can." I was like, "Please do." And you know, she rubbed it. And she's like, "Oh my gosh, it's so soft. I can't believe. It. Wow." She's like, "Do you take care of this thing?" I was like, "Well, yeah. You got to take care of it." And that's okay. So that's the other part. So yeah. So back to why it's so hard for to grow a beard is um well yeah so you have to take that in fact all right i'm okay take the okay so now you're growing it you got different stages and you just it's a pain in the ass you got the little itchy phase and then you have to keep it shaped which is fine but it's just maintenance you gotta keep it shaped cut it you know can't let it go crazy and then you gotta oil it you gotta put beard oil Every day, you just get this little oil and put it in your hands and then rub it. Actually, and you got to wash it. You got to wash it at least every two days. And then you got to, it's, okay. I'm going, I'm all over the place. I'm really sorry. There's different stages of growing it, but it takes a long time. So it takes patience. Patience is number one. It's hard to be patient for a lot of people. And so patience, you got to have patience to grow a beard. And then, yes, the aspects of growing it, combing it drying it then putting oil in it then combing it again and it becomes like just maintaining it so it doesn't look all crazy you have to brush it and maintain it put gel in it it's just it's it takes longer it would take me longer to get ready just messing with my beard than doing anything else and it's just like and then and then try going out to eat you're, you're limited on what you can eat i like barbecue i like ribs i like hot wings can't do that you're not doing that out in public it's getting everywhere and eating anything, no matter what you eat, you're going to have shit everywhere. You get it in your beard, it would get stuck and you can't see it. And then someone would be like, oh, hey, you got stuff in your beard. Or you'd have like a, something that would be just a little sticky and it would get, and it would stick in your hair. And, but you could taste it all day and be like, huh. Uh, <laughs> you're like, oh, I had something, oh, barbecue sauce. It's still on my lip here, on my lip hair here. Oh. And then you got to wash that off. I don't know. You just... It's not easy. It's a it's it's a lot of work to have a nice beard. So I did it for a while and then shaved it all off. But it was a mean looking beard. That's that's ac that's super funny. Like I don't know I don't know a lot about beards. Like I obviously you know you can tell I've been growing mine out my whole life. You know I've still got some work to do. But um, I don't know like this family. Uh, my I guess yeah my mom married us into since you know it's the whole family or whatever. Um, one of the one of my stepfather's daughters, one of my stepsisters, she actually just got married to this guy named Dave. And, like, there's another member of the family. His name is Robin. They're, like, two very, like, Pull that mic big, a little closer to you. Uh, they're, 
that better that's better okay dave and rob are like these two very like masculine like buff dudes like very manly men you know with their like full beards and i remember sitting around on christmas and like you know the wife Brittany, you know they're the ones getting the christmas presents and putting the like from Brittany and dave on it you know like the guy also got the right. present but i remember like rob opened his gift and it was like this beard grooming kit and it had like all these cool things and the look of excitement i've never seen <laughs> such excitement on a grown man's eyes i just remember hearing from over here i hear dave go why didn't you get me that oh <laughs> and nice like, and i just i man those men were proud of their beards but turns out she did get them when he got it the next day nice so smart woman yeah it is i mean it's it's fun for a while and it and to be honest at least for me, it's cool to get compliments, even if it's from other dudes. Like, it's mm-hmm. like, that's right. It is a good beard. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Like, yeah, I would give people fist bumps when they'd be like, you know, nice beard. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I grew it myself. Like, that's thanks. right. Hell yeah, work on this bad boy. I earned that compliment. That's true. That's yeah. very true. <laughs> so stopped growing it out. Why after your beard? 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 Water oh, space? Actually, now that I think about it, the big reason was I had just had my son. Oh, a baby and a beard. <clears throat> I don't feel like that goes well. I can do it for a while because they can pull on it, but they can't pull that hard. But then they get to an age where they just pull and yank. And it's just like you just want to drop them or punch them. Just whatever. Kid, you pull that beard one more time. Not ending well for one of us. <laughs> <laughs> just one. Think carefully. Yep, yep. <laughs> so I was like, all right, I can't. This is just annoying me. I can't do it anymore. And so I just shaved it off. That's fair. <clears throat> that's that's fair. Yep. But I hate shaving. So I always have like a little bit of something because mm-hmm. I just take the clip, uh, you know, the zzz, whatever clippers. I just clip. Because I don't, I don't like shaving. Shaving's a pain. Do you like trim it with scissors or do you just like... No, I just shave it. Just... Yeah. Okay. Well, if, it, if you get a big beard, you got to trim it with scissors first. Just like regular scissors? Whatever kind of scissors you got. Just You don't want your trimmer to get all clogged up with long hair. Like if like your hair. Like You wouldn't just take clippers to that. You want to take... You would cut it off with scissors first and then cut it. Yeah. 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 Same, same thing. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Huh, I'm learning a lot today. Not, I don't know if I'll ever use a lot of this. I don't know. Maybe one day when I'm married, I'll be like, hey, guess what? Like 10 years ago, I got some really sound beard advice. Let me see if I still remember some of it. That's and probably, just it you well. just probably summed up my podcast perfectly. Hey, I learned a lot. I'll probably never use that information <laughs> <laughs> ever in my life. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, I was watching one of your other podcasts, the uh, the Carrot Gang one, and I was oh like, yeah, yeah, you did watch that. What'd you think? I, I am so so like on my two hour drives. I I actually I was like, man, because I'm driving two and a half hours. I'm driving five hours a week at this point, maybe more. And I was like, okay, you know what? I've never listened to a podcast before. I'm gonna listen to this one. So I started listening to Carrot Gang. Holy shit! My episode of Carrot Gang was your first podcast you've ever listened to. Yes, I've never listened to a podcast before ever, and it was super cool. I was like, okay, let, let's see, let's keep track of all the names, like all the stuff. And then at first, I was like, you know what? Don't matter. We're just gonna roll with it. Um, but no, it was super great. It was like super relaxing. I was like, oh, I'm so entertained because I've tried audiobooks and stuff, and I like end up zoning out. But I was like. I'd low key zone out a little bit on the drive, and then I was like, it's "This perfect. whole other topic," and I was like, "Hold on, <laughs> rewind it a little bit," and then I'd re-listen to all of it again. So oh, like, wow. it was pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. So probably gonna like keep listening to that, and I don't know, you know, I'm probably never gonna use that information in the future, like for me, because you know, I'm not a rapper, you know, trying to do anything necessarily but, illegal, but like, no, no, I'm but, definitely gonna repeat it out. It's gonna make some great stories to share. Well, that's in the that's that's the reason. I mean, I'm not putting that stuff out there. Like that episode had a lot of dark web talking, how to get drugs and guns off the dark web. I didn't, I'm not necessarily having that out there. So people look into doing that. I just thought it was fascinating that that's being done yeah. and that these kids are doing it and yeah. just talking about it openly. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't know how good of an idea that is, but. Uh. Well, well, that's what's, yeah, that's, that's cool. I'm, yeah. The puts a crazy smile on my face. Well, I'm glad uh, I didn't scare you away from podcasts and here you are. You obviously listen to a crazy episode and still showed up to do to do one i mean hell yeah that's why i'm here i like the like no censored i feel like that can go a lot of interesting ways like you're not gonna get conversations like hey yeah I access the dark web if you like 
our own limits. <laughs> if you have like outline <laughs> questions to ask, you're not going to get the interesting things that you actually want to hear. <clears throat> yeah. You're not going to get this on Action 41 News. No. Definitely, definitely not. I mean, it would be cool if you did just like, you know, like a, like a little 30 minute in the morning, like, hey, like, let's talk about something that you've probably never heard of. And like, you're going to be dying to hear again next week. Heck yeah. But yeah. And so anyways, let's go back to your little platform. Okay. Because um, I, I want to feel like, I feel like, I don't know, I want to give you stuff. You know, I want to give you this platform to kind of let people know what you're doing as okay. much as I like talking to you and all this stuff. I, well, I am curious about I use I still need to know, I still need to get on this platform. OK, well, let's see. You owe me an email. I do owe you an email. I'm so sorry. I've been a little mm. uh, AWOL this last week or two. I actually just started working back up yesterday. I opened my email and I was like, huh. but I'm, I'm a little backed up on emails right now. But uh, so thank you for the time. I would love to like promote that a little bit. So basically it's like, how can people go to it? How do we find it? It's online, artists, KC, artists, like with an S, KC.com. And then it's it's a social media site, man. Is there it an takes, app? Can I go to my iTunes store or the i? What do you call that? Apple, Apple Tunes, whatever. I, the Apple store. The app store. Apps. I, whatever, the app store on, on yeah. iTunes, on I, I, iOS, iOS, there we go. Yeah, that, I, I don't know what it's called talk. either. I have a, I have a Samsung, but, uh, well, no, no app yet. I actually just launched the website. A month ago like the whole company has been up for about a month and we have about an average of five to ten thousand views a week on average um basically it's this social media site you go on there it takes the best like if you use social media it takes the best that it has from all of it like you can make a profile <clears throat> like what do you Facebook. mean by that like who who determined what aspects of each platform were the best well i guess and what it are would they be Okay, I guess it would be relative to like what this is. It's all it's all me. Like I made the site, I came up with the idea and I was like, okay, artists and musicians, what would help them the best? Like what is going to make this a site that they need to use? And it's like, you know, when you are an artist or musician, whether you do it professionally or as a hobby or you want to like get into doing it as like an entrepreneur and like making it as an artist or musician, what do you need to help you, you know, in where you're at? And so I was like, okay, the cool thing about Facebook is you can make a profile, like you can let people know who you are. Um, you can put information about yourself. You can make posts that you like. So I was like, okay, let's make it so you can make a profile just like Facebook. Anything you can put on Facebook in your profile, you can put um, on the Artist KC profile, but more. Let's see, LinkedIn. If you're a professional, you can put whatever skills you're good at. People can leave reviews for you. Um, you can offer your services. You can even upload your portfolio as an artist onto your profile. You can make posts, upload your media, upload your music. You can have a gallery. So like people are like, okay, I like this person's art. What else they got? Go through your gallery, look at everything. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is like they can see what you're working on. They can see who you are, like get to know you as a person. You're not just some artist. This is your way to like interact and establish yourself with the community. And so like Instagram, you can post media like Facebook. You can make um, a profile like Twitter. You can make posts or whatever. I guess same as Facebook. One thing I really liked was, um, I don't know how many people use Reddit, but I just started using Reddit after I deleted, like... Reddit's supposed to be huge. I, it's amazing. Yeah. Reddit's awesome. Like, I, need, I hear so many things about it, and I just don't... Because, like I said, it's just all reading. Ah. Uh, right? I, I mean... There's the, pictures. Yeah. Like, it, meme, a lot of memes and stuff, right? Like, don't, like, a, almost all the web's memes, memes come off of Reddit? Yeah. Reddit is lit. Like, whatever you see on Instagram, it was on Reddit first. And, like, I'm a big advocate for that. But... The thing I like the most is like, so I'm not big on social media, so I'm what you call like a lurker. I right. don't really post, but I like to look through things. Right. Um, I lurk on a lot of forums and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like forums. You want to see mm -hmm. what other people are saying, even if you don't really have something to contribute. And mm -hmm. like, so I took that. The best thing about Reddit, in my opinion, is the fact that like, one, you don't need any friends or followers to be able to have like activity in your feed. And two, anyone can look at your account, like anyone can look at content without having an account. Because when you go to Reddit, it has like um, the general page. It's like R all, which is the most popular post from every single subreddit or sub community. So like whoever you are, you're getting the best from every community, like the most popular thing. So I was like, OK, that would work for a website for artists and musicians. Like, let's say on the front page. So on the front page of my site, there's like an activity feed that's like Reddit and it'll show the most popular posts for every community. So in this sense, it like rewards voted, like whatever was voted on. 
Yeah, you can vote, you can like, you can heart, you can react to whatever like, images. Whatever has the most likes that day is on the front page or whatever. Yep, at any given moment, whatever's the most popular is on the front page. So this rewards, like, the quality of your work, you know? Um, so if you're a good artist, you don't really know anyone, you don't have any followers or whatever, but you post it in this community and you're actually very talented and a lot of people like it, you're going to get promoted. Like it, this podcast. Mm -hmm. It wants to reward that. <laughs> exactly. It wants to reward people who love what they do or good at what they do and are actively engaging in it. And... Um, you don't need an account to use my site. So, like, you don't have to be an art. Um, only art, only people within 50 miles of Kansas City can make an account as in, like, actively participate. Because, like, LinkedIn, I want everything to be accessible to people. Like, I don't want to connect you with an artist in New York City that you're never really. What's beautiful, it is just the Kansas City. This is uh -huh. just for Kansas City. Just Kansas City. Just, Kans uh, mm -hmm. just for us to pimp our stuff but mm -hmm. new york city can look at it they can yep. access and check they can check my podcast out but mm -hmm. they can't post they anything. just can't post their podcast on there they can't compete with you that's that's if the i thought cool yeah I'm, I'm acting like my podcast is on there but i'm just speaking hypothetically i, I mean your right. podcast is going to be on there i'm working on getting your content up yeah that'd be dope yeah so like it's that it's like this little bubble for kansas city like anyone anywhere in the world i'm getting visits from all around the united states because like when i promote it i promote it to like a worldwide audience you know because i want people to come into my site and see the artists from kansas city or at least summit missouri or blue springs missouri you know these places they've never heard of and be like here there's talent but they can't come in and make an account and like compete with you you know mm -hmm. so it limits competition it increases like market exposure for kansas city artists and like if there's opportunities you know we want to partner with businesses you know if you're an up-and-coming artist you just graduated high school or you're in college or a little bit over you just decide you want to do it and you're like okay where can i go to my first open mic night like i'm ready to like perform you know you don't want to you don't want to get like matched with opportunities like hey here's one in arkansas like here's one in california like here's a business doing grants here no you want to know what's going on near you and mm -hmm. like what tools you can utilize around you mm -hmm. so that's what my site does you know we're hoping to get businesses to like make profiles and they're like okay we're hosting this event we're giving out these grants here are these opportunities for you and they're all within less than an hour's drive for you so that's what it is it's a bubble to help what is it edu uh what is it like the premise of the site is to help enhance our kansas city's art community okay through social networking because like it is aimed at younger audiences the ones that are really like tax on it. savvy very tax savvy yeah so yeah i know? love it i love it because i mean I think you've probably, I don't know, you've probably realized by now like how supportive I am of the Kansas City community and the artist community. Like, I just, I don't know, I get goosebumps thinking about it and just, I love it. So I think this is, this is an exciting thing. Thank you. And I'm really kind of, I don't know, honored that you came to me to kind of try and be a part of it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Like, I, I my mind was blown when I came across this podcast. First of all, I didn't know what podcasts were, like, much less that, like, you know, there were local ones. So I was like, oh my god this is its own like art form i didn't even know this mm -hmm. existed and then like i saw everyone that you were interviewing and i was like this dude cares about this because essentially like even though technically i do own the company that runs the social networking site we prefer to call it like a project mm -hmm. you know we're not really making money off of our users you know we do run a store um where our users can sell their stuff they can you can sell your music you can sell albums your beats and you can also sell like merchandise in fact for some of our users we actually pay for them to have their merchandise made to help them promote themselves um but we don't at least at this point it is just a project we don't really make money off of that so you right. put your stuff on there you know we just do the mark we're a marketing service mm -hmm. we get you out there without you having to worry about it you get all the money that you make and like we essentially get our benefits back from people visiting our site I say clicks or something like that mm -hmm. so it's a win-win you know it's in our best interest to provide the best user experience right. for our users well, yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and so like it's great you know we <clears throat> don't have to profit off of the people that are using ours and at the same time like we're helping a community that um i say us because i now have a team of two other people and like you know they're not getting paid you know i do have a budget for running this but i can't really pay a staff so these people that i found are just people that are passion they're like you know what i believe in this i think this is gonna go far i think this is really gonna help the art like kansas city art community i think it's gonna help me someday so like i'm gonna put my time into it and like my heart and my soul and we're gonna make this thing great wow yeah it's so it's beautiful it's been pretty cool what kind of help do you need um well right now i have two other team members trent and taylor well shout out to trent and taylor yeah shout out to trent and taylor guys thank you 
Uh, Trent is essentially our talent scout. He's a rapper. He's a musician. You know, he connects with the community. He's very good with people. People, I can talk to people. I'd rather not. I'm an introvert. You know, I want to run the website. I want to run the finances, the administrative. So, you know, I've got Trent reaching out like, hey, what you guys need? What can we do for you? Like, let me know. And then we've got Taylor, who very impressive. You know, like I met up with him for a uh, job interview. He was the first person to ever hand me oh, a resume. Me about, yeah. I think you were telling me about that. Yeah, I met up with him yeah, yeah. L- like right before I met you. And I was I was blown away. You know, this this dude is impressive. You know, he was in the Marines. Um, he just finished an internship for the now mayor of Kansas City, like a very impressive gentleman. And he's like, what, 20, 25. But he also, aside from his like professional resume, he brought me his creative resume. He's a, um, what is it? Not community. He does some sort of performing arts. I'm not sure if like poetry or general, like acting or theater, but like I was like, how cool is it to have like a professional who's also creative? Because a lot of professionals are creative, but don't have a way to like outlet that outside mm-hmm. of their like professional sphere or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's doing sort of, uh, I guess we'd call him public relations. He's our um, events manager. So one of the things that we're working on right now is partnering with local businesses in Kansas City to not have like more open mic nights, but to participate in being venues for up and coming artists and musicians. So he's opening up communications with like local bars, local restaurants, local uh, coffee shops, whatever galleries and saying like, hey, we want to host a show here. You know, we'll take applications for like musicians who want to perform and then give musicians a place to like get out there. And uh, we're actually in contact with some record labels right now and about getting some people like getting some reps sent over there. So like the people that perform at our shows can you know get signed at those shows so it's you know local people like local artists it's all local yeah all local businesses all local artists you know so we're coming past like the social networking site that's the best way for like a user to like take our tools we give to them to help themselves Mm -hmm. and then outside of that like artist kc is also trying to help set you up with record labels trying to help you get performances trying to help get you into like art shows and stuff like that like we want to help the kansas city art community thrive in any way we can we're gonna look something up. Uh, this, this gentleman that I was talking to just uh, just a couple days ago was telling me about something, and I told him I would bring it up to you. Mm-hmm. Of course, I, as unprofessional as I am, that's why I, I am looking up now instead of doing it <laughs> earlier. Okay, so he had, I think it's a nonprofit that he just started. It's called uh, KC Minority Artist Association. Okay. Um, I don't know. I told him I'd bring it up to you to check out, but it's it, it's just um, you know, artists. It, and I don't know, just like a nonprofit to help minority artists in Kansas City. So I was thinking that might be something for you guys to kind of look at. Yeah, who was this gentleman? Was he someone on your show? Uh, no, he. Oh boy, what's the best way? He's a um. He's a guy that has a dream. Uh-huh. And he's wanting, he's got big dreams for Kansas City and uh, a, a channel, he, uh, a, a cable channel. He wants to create a, cha- a cable channel based here in Kansas City with um, all locally made stuff. Um, cool. So up north, north, um, like by Berry Road, is that Highway Patrol place it's uh it was, it's called like the bumblebee it's it's yellow uh, yellow and black it looks like a big bumblebee building okay he's wanting to do like buy that place because it's for sale and then turn that into like a tv studio have different like uh sets on there and like uh, just do different things like that for this tv channel and he and anyways he's got his i don't, I don't know he's, he's it's, that's like it in a nutshell without going into a whole lot of detail but anyways uh, the thing he was telling me that he has this thing the kc minorities K- kansas city minor gosh darn it, what was it kansas city yeah kc minority artist association where he's wanting to help you know minority artists so okay what's it do you have his like contact information i'd love to reach out yeah to i do I actually ha- can you send uh, me after the show i feel yeah, like yeah, it'd be yeah. weird <laughs> to, like <laughs> just hey everybody why no, don't I you guys do all I was call gonna say, yeah i've got uh, after the show i'll give you uh okay. his information and yeah, I mean, I, yeah, like he said, he mentioned the other day, I was like, I'm having this lady on tomorrow that's doing this KC artist thing where it's just all Kansas City artists all on this social platform. I just thought uh-huh. it'd be kind of cool. Maybe you guys could talk. Oh, heck yeah. Like, I 
yeah i mean that's the whole point is like helping out people exactly. that want to help out the community yeah. yeah oh by the way i just shameless plug here since for whoever's watching www.artistskc.com it's completely free go check it out go check it out yeah kcartist.com artistkc.com artistkc.com i'm i'm horrible <laughs> i don't even know why i have a podcast huh <sighs> so you're super smart you're top two percent what's that like top two percent of the smart iq and that's what it's like is you building your own social media platform wow and you're motivated as heck i guess yeah i don't know what um where do you see yourself in like i don't know five or six years like do you what do you do you, do you look do you look in the future like that do you like i have goals for the next five years to get this this accomplished and like do you have plans I guess I'm asking the questions that the 50 year olds were asking you when you were 16. Um, I guess. I mean, I, I, I suppose I have a better but not better answer now. Um, I, I don't know. I have things that I would like to achieve. I don't know how realistic it is. I would love for this like company to blow up a little bit. You know, I think it has an incredible amount of potential, especially if it expands to other cities. But at this point, like, I don't know how able I am to do that. So like, you know, I have hopes for this project. Mm -hmm. Um, I have three years of school left since I've taken two years off. So I, you know, I want to get my degree. I don't, I don't really give a shit about my grades, but like, I just, I want the, the piece of paper with the degree on it. Um, and I don't know, I have a job right now that. What's your degree going to be in? Uh, probably Spanish, science, tech, and international affairs. I don't know. International affairs. Well, science, tech, and international affairs. So how oh, science and technology those... impact international affairs. Whoa, I like that. Yeah, that's cool, right? Wait, like, you've done that? Have you taken classes for that? Like, No. Oh, I'm... that's something you want to do. Yeah. Uh, it. That I... sounds fascinating. You could really go down some rabbit holes with that. I, I like that. Especially with like um, Boston Dynamics type stuff, right? That would be super cool. Because like I can't do this. I can't do the science and the math, but I can do the like politics international affairs business part you know which is what this degree would help uh i was doing arabic but then i was like you know what i don't work for the fbi i don't agree uh, you know they're doing some sus shit over there so like i don't know if i want to be a part of that so i stopped doing that um but no i'm getting this degree because of the job i have now i think it would like help it it's more relevant um, what's your job now that's what you're, the social media thing is that your job now or is that your side piece that's my that's my side piece but uh since who's your main so who's your main bitch who's my main <laughs> bitch uh well oh, i probably no i'm not gonna say that oh I'm, I, I, that I, I'm sorry <laughs> that came off so wrong if someone took that out of context no, no, especially no. if you had like a female boss what i mean you people oh yeah let oh, me yeah. explain when i say your main bitch you mean like the main, my main focus the main yeah. focus yeah, yeah i mean i don't think my boss will ever see it but like i nobody will probably see this maybe three other people oh they totally will i'm reposting yeah. those everywhere so that i can i'll be like hey fam like you do your social media things i don't know how but um I don't work so much for, I guess technically I work for like two or three companies, um, but I don't work so much for these companies than I do for like an individual. Okay. Um, I work for this gentleman uh, named PJ, probably shouldn't put his last name out there, but his name is PJ. And he is the uh, former VP of JP Morgan, like former uh, director of the Imperial Bank of Canada, like three time CEO of like AKA multinational corporations. Baller alert baller as boom, hell boom, boom. like do, 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 do. i don't know what this man did but like i you know i was like looking him up and like i was reading his resume and it's like oh yeah i created like hundred million dollar markets around the world for like one of my companies and i was just like is he looking to be on a podcast uh i i don't know he's a pretty busy man right i, I don't know i i always ask him yeah that'd be dope he's definitely i his life story too you know because when i was looking at his resume i was like oh my god but i don't want anything from him if he, he probably is, probably thinks people are probably after him for money and type shit like that all the time he's it's just a very like that, average looking dude though like, i'm just looking to have a cool talk with him i don't know if i saw him like at the grocery store i'd just be like meh like i i not not like meh but like i wouldn't be like okay this dude is like who he is big at the pimpin'. level that he is yeah right. big pimping because he's just he's so casual about it like he doesn't like flex he's just he's like one of the nicest people i've ever met it's incredible Rich um, people can be nice. I mean, yeah, but I mean, not just because he's rich, just like in general, he's just like one of the most laid back, chill, like nice people ever. And like, I'm like, okay, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but I work for him. And so basically what he's doing now is like after he got out of uh, Wall Street and like investment trading and, you know, stuff like that, he was like, you know what? 
I want to start up companies, help him grow. I know how to do it. I know things about financials. So we did that three times. Um, I don't know. He's from like Boston. So we did it somewhere else. Do you have a Boston accent? No, he's been. No, actually, I don't think he has any accent. A uh, shout out to American Shaman for the CBD that I uh, get from them. You ever try their CBD? You want to try some CBD? It's legal in 100% of the states. It's just CBD. How should come down? Uh, nah. Maybe after the show. But <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I had them on the podcast. And wait, is that? Wait, what's the logo on that? The little C is that from Cookies? Is that the little? No, this is CBD from American Shaman. CBD from American Shaman. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what CBD or oh, American Shaman is. American Shaman is a local... Well, he's actually... He's he's locally based CBD. You know what CBD is? No. Oh, my. Okay. CBD is a derivative of you know the hemp plant, but it's non-psychoactive. And it's legal when you buy it over the counter. Okay. And it's a really... It's, it's got a lot of benefits. Uh, there's no THC in there. But it's just like... That's the stuff from marijuana that makes you high, right? THC makes you high. But CBD is also from the same plant? It's from the same plant, but it's like it's non-psychoactive cousin. Okay. And that's been legalized? like. Oh, yeah. Has that always been legal? Or is it just like a recent thing? Ah, uh, CBD's kind of always... Hmm, it's been legal for a long time, CBD. Because it's non-psych... Yeah, I think that's been le- legal for a long time. Like I said, it's non-psychoactive. Anyways, it's like anti-inflammatory. Really? It's okay. really good for that. Uh, it's good for anxiety. It's just good to relax. I don't know. There's all kind of benefits. It prevents cancer. That's amazing. Oh, my God. Like, I was going to say, why aren't more people talking about this? But a lot of people probably are talking about this. But I don't know because I'm not on social media. So. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people aren't talking about it because this the... Because of the prohibition on marijuana, a mm-hmm. lot of the science has been set back because there hasn't been funding for it, and including like the CBD. There's only been like 50 years of really hard st- studying of science of CBD and marijuana because mm-hmm. of our you know shitty government, as we were talking about earlier, putting all kinds of restrictions, labeling it a class one or whatever. What is it? That, uh, oh, boy. I'm having a brain fart. <clears throat> Basically, you know, where it's hard to uh, hard to get funding to study it because it's illegal and it's hard to, anyways, access to it. So there's only been like 50 years of hard science for it. But it's been used for, since human beings have been around. CBD. I don't know. Anyways, you going to drink both those waters? No. Yeah. I'm going to steal one. Take it. If you would have drank that, yeah. I'm if sorry, I, I'm if I already drank the whole one, you were thirsty. You're just like waiting. I was thirsty. I was like, yeah, it's, we've been going for a little over an hour. She hasn't touched either one of them. I'm gonna steal one of those back from her. Well, what? It's been an hour already. Yeah. Can you believe that? Damn, that's long. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a minute. Oh my god. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. Hold on. I should probably. Is this better? I keep moving the mic because I want to drink water, not like have it recorded. But um. Just you know, go like this. Oh, that's smart. I was just going to, but... It's so smart. I could probably be in the Mensa Society. <laughs> I mean, you never know, like, new tasks, new intelligence. You never know what's going to be redefined, you know? I'm no idiot. I know. I'm not smart either, though. I don't know I'm about like that. Ju- I'm just smart enough to know that I'm not smart, because when I get around really smart people, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what a real smart person is. Why not you? Why not different types of intelligence? I mean, uh, like- just because I know my limits, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, like, one of the things I was going to say is, like, you know, emotional intelligence, stuff like that. Like, I was really worried about coming on this show because I'm not a super talkative person. I get really awkward having just regular conversations. I find it kind of hard. I'm I'm more reserved unless, like, you know, I want to put in the energy to do it. And, like, I only have so much battery. So I was like, oh, shit, some of these podcasts are, like, over an hour long. I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to make it 20 minutes before, like, 20, 30 minutes is going to be like, well... Thanks for having me on my show. Like, thanks for coming on my show or something. I'd be like, okay. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people think that. They're like, what? How? What are we gonna talk about? I'm like, just come on. I'll figure it out. Like I, like not in a cocky sense, mm-hmm. but I believe in myself enough that I can have someone come on here and I can hold, hold them for at least 45 minutes, an hour, and get something cool. Yeah. See, that's like super impressive. Like, not pe- not many people can do that. I probably could. I can't do it outside of here. Why not? Because I'm like I'm an introvert too. Like oh, you get me, uh-huh. you get me out. You know how it is. You're an introvert. You get me out in a 
wherever it's it's i really gotta force myself to and yeah. it's so weird because I, n- I never used to be like that i don't know when it changed i'd probably have to do some real soul searching to think about when it changed but i used to be real outgoing just always like life of the party do like the extrovert guy that would be out there acting a fool just whatever but then somewhere it changed I don't know. I feel like that reminds me of a quote. I kept seeing this quote because, like, you know, the internet's all about, like, Keanu weed. Reeves right now. Yeah. And weed. And weed. No, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, Keanu Reeves about him yeah. not, not touching women when he does the, uh... The, like, your breathtaking meme, like, just, huh? like, the meme where he, like, said, like, you're breathtaking, no, you're breathtaking, like, that whole meme. I don't know that meme. Oh, I'm really? not on Reddit, sorry. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, okay, Reddit humor then. Well, I don't know, but, like, I don't know, just the internet's, like... I don't know, Keanu Reeve got called, like, the internet's boyfriend or something, and I just, I remember seeing this quote from him that was, like, you know, they, they, like, interviewed him, and they were, like, you know, how come we always see you, like, alone, you know, when we take pictures, there's no one with you, and he was, like, you know, like, I don't mind being alone, like, I go out to eat alone, I take, I go to the movies alone, I buy clothes for myself alone, and, like, I'm happy, and he said something about, like, when you are, uh, what was it, when you are truly, like, fulfilled, when you are truly happy with yourself, company becomes an option and not a necessity or something like that. And I don't know. I think about that a lot because, like, how many times do we want company because we feel like we need it? And how many times are we actually comfortable being alone? Like, what is it that drives our need to, like, well, we're have so- company? We're social animals. We're designed, we're designed to be with groups. You wanted to live in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But not, like, alone hermit style. I want to go into the mountains, but I still want to come back to... Okay. Some people. Some people. That's fair. I don't want to come back to like a bustling city in traffic. Mm-hmm. I but but I do love Kansas City though. Like I love I love that there's always like I do love the city life. I love going down to the crossroads and getting pizza and drinking beer and checking the art, art out down there. Checking going to a a local bar and checking out some local music. Like I love all that. I hate the traffic. Um. But yeah. I but like I'm a bow hunter. And I just find myself not hustle and bustle is probably the wrong word to use for me because I'm not like in the rat race, Mm -hmm. but I'm in that trap. I'm in the rat trap where I'm just stuck going to work. Anyways, I need to reset myself. And there's just something, at least for me, and I think a lot of men, at least, I don't know, I, I won't speak for women, but I think for a lot of men, there's just something in our DNA for hunting and getting out out in nature even okay not even even doesn't have to necessarily be hunting but getting out in alone alone in the wilderness just where you have to you're just out there i don't know there's it, it's very it can be very psychedelic it can be very healing for the soul you can do some real like just meditation where you're just all alone and there's nothing else out there but peace and nature and birds and animals and when you're out there hunting, at least for me, like I'm up in a tree. Nothing knows I'm up there. Deer will walk. I've had deer walk right underneath me where I could just, I could jump on them. They have, and they have no idea that you're there. And you just get to peek in. You get to like a little secret of like what it's like to be out there in nature and what these animals are really, really doing. And then there's just, I just think there's something in a man's, nature to get out there and do that like to be out there alone and try at least at least for the hunting part for me like i don't know i feel it's like a real reset but i feel a real connection when i'm out there like trying to provide and trying to do something that man man's been doing ever since we were man getting food from animals i don't know it's just it's a struggle and it's a rewarding struggle like i don't know so yeah i i do want to be in the mountains and do that kind of stuff but yeah, that I would like to come back to a town with some population, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's nice to be away from people for a bit, but always it's always really good to come back. Mm-hmm. What kind of hobbies do you? Uh, so you you said yeah, uh, music. What kind of what's your musical expertise, or what do you like to do um, for music? Piano, violin, cello. I actually play the electric guitar. Oh. Yeah. So uh Nice. Yeah, I like it. I, I love, love it so I, much. I, I love it so much. Love, you could, yeah. Um, Who doesn't love a good electric guitar? Oh, yeah. What kind of like what style like what do you like? 
Want to take a guess? I'm trying to look at you. Look at you. Look you over. What you probably would have said like classical music on the piano or like violin or something, right? Yeah, I mean that was yeah very stereotypical. I don't know, maybe like a uh, uh, I don't know. I, I want to say '60s rock, late '60s rock, early '70s rock. That's my guess. No, uh, I actually like to play metal music. Metal? Yeah. Okay. So not a lot of people guess that. Like my guitar. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that at all. No one really does. And then, you know, I whip out my guitar and they're like... And you shred? I can. Yeah. Uh, I do pretty okay. It's been a minute since I played. I stopped playing when I got to college. But like, yeah, I, I love doing that. It's literally my favorite thing in the world. My guitar is my baby. You know, anyone that comes here and I'm like, you want to look at it? Like, you want to pet it? Yeah, I know you want to <laughs> pet it. It's a, it's, a, it's a sexy guitar, like, to be honest. I love it. Mind if I show you a picture? No, I'd love to see a picture this sexy thing oh it's nice like i'm like that with it, my bow with your bow you're just like you want to show it to people even though they like have no idea what you're talking yeah, about they're like you know what? sexy yeah. bow and if you shot this thing you're like whoa it's like a rocket launcher you know it's just do you have your bow here yeah it's somewhere i would i couldn't I'm, yeah i do i can show it to you after the show okay yeah i'm 10 out of 10 down to see that so like a bow like bow and arrow yeah I'm sure is it like no i guess that's a crossbow yeah it's a normal it's a yeah you'll see it's a badass bow it slices, it dices. This is my guitar. I knew it. I knew, <laughs> when you said metal, that's exactly what I pictured. That's exactly, yeah. Like an, I, I don't know, like an Ibanez type. Oh, it is an Ibanez. It is an Ibanez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's perfect, actually. It's like the, oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's but, sweet. Yeah, that's that's what I play. I've been playing since <laughs> I was. <laughs> Literally, that, yeah, okay, that was pretty bomb. That, that's I just the came up with like. that now. Yeah, I, I used to like that stuff. I mean, some people are probably going to hit you up and be like, man, produce some of my tracks now, like, after seeing this. But, like, I don't know. I love it. I don't know. For some reason, I'm not a very angry person, but my favorite kind of music is, like... You don't have to be angry to do really that. angry music. Like, the angrier the music, the better, like... Who do you like? Um, yeah, it varies, like, on the different types of, like, sub subgenres and whatever, but I guess... uh. My top few bands would be Disturbed is 10 out of 10. My favorite, I saw them headlight at Rock Fest really? a couple years ago. Uh, David Drainman is, oh, I love him. They're kind of before your time, right? Uh, I mean, you know they're still mean? producing stuff now, but yeah, I think but they kind of start a little bit earlier. Right, when, golly, uh, when were you born? 2000? 98. 98? Mm -hmm. I graduated in 98. Oh my God. I feel so little. <laughs> you should. Yeah. Um, or if anyone else is watching this that knows me, depending on who you are. Yeah. 95. <laughs> 95. I was born in 95. That's what my ID says. Okay. But, um, so anyway, but anyways, regardless. So that's kind of, yeah, Disturbed was like, you were real young that. when Disturbed was coming. Like, like you shouldn't have been listening to Disturbed when Disturbed came out. I mean, I didn't start until I'm I, I'm not like, saying you were, but. Yeah. I yeah, no, they're they're definitely one of the older bands, but like, I mean, like, Korn is pretty good too. I like Well, them. that's even before them. Yeah. I, that was one of, that was one of the big first bands like that I got into. I mean, Shoots I and still. Shoots and Ladders mm -hmm. was uh, like, the I think the first song was like, whoa. I like this. See, yeah, like that. I love that. Like, I like Slipknot. I like Horn. Like that sort of like new metal type. Like angry, yeah. uh, disturbed. Um, How about Pantera? Not so much that type. No. No. Um, I, a little bit more. I'm not a big fan of death metal. Okay. Yeah. Black metal is like, meh. Um, one I like is like, oh, I forgot what it's called. It's either like, oh, I forget. The name was told to me a couple years ago. I met this dude that like reviewed like metal bands and he's the one who showed me this like subgenre. It's called like slam metal or like smash metal. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one, but like one of the bands is like Infant Annihilator. That's one of my favorite bands, like Disturbed, Infant Annihilator, and then um, Corn, Slipknot, and Megadeth. You have a band? I have a band. Do you have a band? I do not have a band. I'm not. No, no. I, I, I don't play for other people. It's just a private thing for me. Would you like ever want to maybe have aspirations to do like a little metal band? Uh, I tried when I was in high school, you know, I was like the guitarist, you know, but, uh, do like, I mean, do some so local good. shows and just kind of, you ever check out the local scene? No, the local, the local metal scene a uh -huh. little bit. I know that there are like house shows around Kansas city. My friends like, cause you know, like a lot of DIY growing up, like my friends were like into that, you know, mm -hmm. the, like they were into that scene and like growing up, they're still going to that. And like, yeah, so I'll be like to house shows and stuff where they'll have like metal concerts going on and like metal bands and it's. 
it's pretty awesome i love it i love the house shows here in kansas city i went to a really cool one i had a dude on the podcast that has a music podcast mm-hmm. like you know he uh interviews a lot of music musical guests uh artists and he also does uh um, he has a magazine where he reviews music he's like the a, shuttlecock magazine that one yeah yeah i don't remember his name but that dude yeah yeah aaron mm-hmm. rhodes is his mm-hmm. name shout out to aaron um, Aaron, respond to my email, please. Oh. Oh, I did. I reached out after I saw that on there. I was like, so Aaron, if you're watching, get on that this, mic. Let him know. Email me back. I'll shout out to him. I'll, I'll, Por favor. I'll hit him up. Okay. Um. Oh, where was I going with that? What were we talking about? Um, the dude, the local metal. Oh yes, scene the, the, the metal scene. Yeah. So and he, so when he was on the podcast, he had uh, some flyers of some show. He puts on shows too. Really? On the but they're like the real small DIY, <clears throat> and so I went to this one that he was throwing, because there was a it was like hardcore metal slam metal type stuff, mm-hmm. but then there was also a rapper, and I went I went to go see the rapper, because I was interested in him and getting him on my show, and I ended up having him on the show, but um I, so I go to this show and it's all you know younger kids and I used to I used to mosh I was my first concert was Rage Against the Machine like I'm into that shit. Okay. Um, so I went there and I'm no stranger to a mosh pit and, but it was like, it's just been such a long time and here I'm like the older dude, but, and I get in, it's just all these young kids just, it's just so funny. Like them, they do like that stomp when they get their arms like this or like this and they just stomp from one side of the mosh pit or one side of the room to the other side of the room. Just rah, rah. like, they're not running at anybody, but they just do this crazy head banging stomp. It's hilarious. Have you ever seen that? I have never seen that. I got a what? video. Of, oh, I got a video. I've got a video and I'll show you that to you after I should write stuff shit, shit down that I have to show you after the show. Bo, Bo, that Bo and, the, and, and the crazy video. Mash, Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, it was interesting going to that, but it was really cool. Like it did sound good. And like I could see myself going to checking that stuff out. Ten out of ten would recommend. Like it's I remember going to like these parties and like one was like at this giant property. Like there was a house, there was a bonfire going, like dozens and dozens of people. I don't know, maybe I don't know how many people were there, but like they had like this garage outside, bands were setting up, you know, I had dudes with long hair, like head banging, you had like sweet metal guitars, and then like at another show they'd like rotate out local bands like some would actually be touring through like going to casey and they'd stop at this like particular house and you go in and like people are shredding metal man and like people are headbanging people are drinking enjoying themselves stuff like that and it's like it's just a lit time especially if you like that kind of music and like you know right. house is like shaking i don't know it's it's That's lit cool. yeah mm-hmm. and the community is super nice too like you know you think that like the metal community is like full of like all these scary people but like they're all super lit and like super yeah. nice so it's yeah it's great to be honest it, it was it was pretty cool it can be a little scary though if you're if you go into that thing yeah like if i would have brought somebody that's never been to a show like that they'd be they probably wouldn't have stayed too long like oh it's uh i don't want to get hurt yeah you ever you, you heard of rock fest no what's that rock fest in kansas city never heard of it oh my god it's like this uh I guess you know how they do like fests. It's this like outdoor performance hosted by 98.9 The Rock. They probably have like a couple stages up there. Probably like 100,000 people. Probably by like Memorial Hall. I mean, yeah. It, it's literally by Memorial Hall. Probably they had two, got three like stages. hard rock. A lot of like metal, hard rock, rock, metal type things. Whatever right? they play on 98.9. Once a year they have this like yeah. festival. They get like 30 to like what? 80K people. I think they got 80k when like disturbed headline and they stuff. They fucked up downtown a few years ago after that big rainstorm and oh, people were parking fest? everywhere in Mudfest. Oh. oh my gosh, they t- I used to live right down there and they tore that area up. I was so bummed. I was like, "You assholes." I mean, I was there. I was at Mudfest yeah. and like I just Jeez, how old were you? I was 16. 16. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was I've been going I've been every year since I was 16, so that's 4 years going. They canceled it this year, but I'm just not going to count that and go back next year. I don't know. They're not having it this year. I guess they're like postponing it. I think this. Huh. I don't know. I don't know if it's like funding or whatever. I haven't really heard much of funding. it. Funding? That thing was like one of the biggest and people from all over the country would come and travel to that thing. I don't. I really. I don't know why they're not doing this this year. I'm super disappointed. It would have been like my fifth year. It was going to be like celebration. But uh, no, I don't know. It was super cool. And there's, you know, I was 16, so I wasn't really drinking. Well, I mean, like, even if I was, I don't know. I just wasn't. I just didn't really drink in high school or, like, do any of that. Uh, I'm, you know, college got around. But, um, no, I just remember being, like, super sober. There's mud everywhere, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, 
drunk adults slipping and sliding in the mud and like i just got to watch that like completely sober and it was honestly it was fantastic it was quality entertainment so it, it was pretty good sorry i've never up, i've never been yeah i don't yeah i've never been to rock fest you should it's it's uh it's always so hot and i i don't know get a tan i i would like to go i don't know i just come up with an excuse why i don't want to go they're not i don't know do you like good music nudity and weed nah <laughs> of course I mean, he's a little he's like, <laughs> nah you know what i don't like any of that i mean if that's if that's something uh you know you find yourself liking sometime rock fest is yeah the place for that you know they've got the good music you said you were into that you know they'll, they'll have pretty good bands they had like um no i always see the lineup and there's always at least a couple couple cool five finger death punch headline last year and like you know people were pretty excited about that uh, you know who i do love and they're from and, I, and he lives here now is uh seven dust really they live around here yeah the the lead singer was his name lashawn lajon lajon yeah he lives here in kansas city oh my god so you need to hook up with him and get him on your casey artists uh social media artist casey god doggone what do they call it uh casey artist yeah because everything's casey artist casey gosh darn it uh-huh. I, I need to like yeah artist and casey yeah but oh shit like sorry that would be super great yeah okay i didn't know that i i mean hopefully like you know one day we'll get to that point where we're like hey you know come to our site and like you'll see this dude you know like i don't know maybe one day you'll see tech nine that's the dream you know because everybody's KC. fucking dream is tech nine everyone's kansas city dream is tech nine mm-hmm. it's gotta be just annoying being him sometimes getting hit up all the time from casey people going come on man that guy put in so much work to get where he is like I was around, you know, I'm not from Kansas City, but I, I, I call a Kansas City home now. I've been here longer than, you know, I've been here for well, roughly 20 years. And, you know, I remember back when Tech was first starting driving around his vans with uh, like vinyled out with all of his logos and stuff on there and going to like these small shows like that dude's just been a hustler and a grinder since since he was a kid. Like he earned what he's got. He probably just gets sick of these people coming up to him, asking him for all kinds of stuff all the time, just because you know it's Tech Nine. Everyone knows Tech Nine. That's the dream. That's the Kansas City dream. I mean, that's that's what he is, and like he seems pretty loyal. Like when his songs no, he is too. Like- he is. He's all about Kansas. I, I can't. I'm not speaking for the dude. I'm just speculating. That's. Pro- it's pro- I mean, I would probably be. I don't know. I mean, it's in his songs. Like you know, it's it's your hometown. Like I know, like whenever should i if i do like make it big i'm gonna be like hell yeah like kansas city is like i'm a product of kansas city you yeah know? but i don't know again back to like rock fest like again good music <laughs> i know you like that uh, who doesn't like good music uh nudity you know they have this whole uh you, you see a lot of uh a lot of female nudity uh they have like this tradition where you like have beads and you give beads to women and they'll flash you <laughs> so wait hold on yeah hold on no no that's their tradition yeah at rock fest you go in there you can Hold buy on. your own beads. you know that tradition's like really 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 old from mardi gras i i don't know where it's from but really? that's that's what they do at rock fest man so oh, you'll see women walk wow, around that's like so funny yeah that's that, i think that's an age thing that's why i'm laughing at it you think maybe or maybe it's just a geographical th- geography type thing because you're from you're from kansas city but you know what mardi gras is mm-hmm. big you know parade and fest you know festivities down in new orleans and actually all of louisiana but that's the big thing it's the beads if you want beads you got we got to see your boobs Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's what you do at rock fest i don't know where it came from i don't know that's where it came from it came from mardi gras either way if you ever go to rock fest you know get your pre-sale tickets 25 and then just spend your remaining 75 dollars on beads and you're gonna have a lit ass day i'm just gonna wear i'm gonna wear as many beads as as i possibly can as my body and put them on my arms my legs everything just everyone you pass like oh here's a beat and like even people you don't think will do it you know like they'll do it everybody sometimes even if you just see someone else like handing out beads you're just like okay who are they gonna throw it to next like (laughs) and then you know we like oh real talk you walk in there that you you probably get like a second hand high just from being around there that's a concert you go to any concert it's gonna be and there's like other stuff too you know but yeah like any concert it's super chill there's always food there's always beer alcohol like people chilling in the grass like just listening to music because it's so loud and it's it's lit but it's all like rock metal my issue with it is that it's it's usually the hot it's there in the summertime and it's really hot and it's an all-day thing it's like i don't want to just be out it gets so hot in kansas city 
Like, I don't want to be out there all day and then buying beer and spending that much money on beer all day because it's hot. I don't know. It just seems, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being. It's definitely rough to get through. I mean, the last four years I've been, it's 12 hours. Right. The whole festival, one day, 12 hours is like. I mean, I'm coming from it as, gosh, yeah. My my twenty uh, my twenty year old self mm-hmm. would be kicking myself in my dick right now if he saw me talking like this. But it's like I'm you know I'm almost forty. I can hang, but it's like I can hang with anybody. Mm-hmm. But it's like, do I f- do? Is this worth me hanging for? Because I can hang with anybody, but I'm gonna pay for it. Mm-hmm. Like whoever I'm hanging with, they probably won't have to pay for it, but I'm gonna pay for it. So a lot of times I have to be like. I can do it, but is it going to be worth it? So, like, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is Rock Fest worth the squeeze? Worth the squeeze. Pre-sale tickets, you know, they'll start off at $25, I think. Then they'll go up to 60 Then they'll go up to 80 But, like, you can get your tickets. That's right. For 25 Pre-sale. Yeah, the Rock, some kind of club type thing. But anybody can join it for free. And it's, yeah. Yeah. Early. Or I think it's just, like, if you get there during their, like, pre-sale times. But, like, and, you know, it's 12 hours. The headliners, like late at night you can so you can get there in the you don't evening. have to spend 12 hours there i understand but i'm the kind of guy that's like let's make a whole day of it we're gonna i mean do it like you can take oh shit i don't know just like spend a day outside hang out with people like get drunk meet people listen it's just well it's canceled this year yeah i mean yeah not this so year. now Hopefully we gotta wait till next year i'm there's another rock fest in like wisconsin that's got low key no Ooh. high key it's way better than this one like the bands are more famous we're at like, wisconsin milwaukee I don't know. Tickets are like two to four hundred dollars, though. So like after I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pay my twenty five bucks, and it's, it's. I'm gonna call it a day, but I don't know. One day I'll go, and it's like it's it's a three day thing. Oh, okay. So like it's Camp- camping lit. and all kind of. No, no. I think you stay. Ah, uh, I yeah. don't know. I didn't look into it after I saw the ticket price, and I was like it's three days, be. and I was like, I can't, I can't. It's gotta do be that. a camping type thing, right? I it maybe can't. you can stay at hotels. I think. I mean, you uh, of course you could. Yeah, but. But for doing something like I don't know, I, don't, I, don't really I think of camping for something like that—that's so much money to go to a festival for that long. If you're gonna be and spending money on a yeah, which is why you know someday, not today, which is why I was just waiting for this one. But ten out of ten, would recommend you should go next year if they have it. It's it's a quality experience. Wouldn't have kept doing it if I'm gonna need to go with a veteran. You want to uh, show me around? Hell yeah! I mean, like every year I try to find be, people like, hey, you ever been to Rock Fest? No. We're gonna be partnered up by then. Your site's gonna be blowing up. I'm hell yeah. This podcast is gonna be ever. People are gonna come up to you like, hey, oh my god, you're that dude from the podcast. Like, can I get an interview? You know, like, uh, there you go. You're gonna be like face of Kansas City, like uh, interviewing. Boom. Boom. I am gonna be that. And Kansas City. There's a lot of competition out there. Really? Yeah, there is. I was surprised too. For like podcasting in Kansas City. Yeah, there's a lot of podcasts and good podcasters in Kansas City. So what's the difference? Uh, I guess you already told me about the difference between having like a podcast and being on the radio. Why not? Oh, like, big difference. Big difference. What's the Okay. What's the difference between a podcast and a talk show? I, what's your What's your definition of a talk show? Well, I don't know. I don't really watch many talk shows. But where would you watch a talk show? Um, I thought that sometimes like radio stations just do stuff like this where it's okay. just like two people having a conversation. Okay. So you're talking talk radio type shit. Oh, talk radio. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Is that what you mean by talk show? Okay. Yeah. The difference between that and this is I can say, fuck off. I can just say that. If you were on the radio, it would be boop. Really? It'd be censored. On all radio? Yeah. Why? FCC regulations. There's there's a regulation. You can't say uh, fuck on the radio? No, you can't say fuck dick. No, wait, you have, fuck shit. You can't cuss on the radio? No, you can't say anything. Why? At, there's just these regulations that, you know, f- federal regulations that are protecting, I imagine, their I, their their motivation is protecting little ears from hearing cuss words, bad words on the radio. And I mean, mm, if you're going to be that parent that's going to, like, play a talk show where they say things like fuck or shit and, like, your kid's but, in the car, but that's it's on the ra- you. But it's the radio and, like, if you're, say you're driving through, you're on vacation and you're in a van and you're going through some random town and you're just flipping looking for some music... Oh, I like I like I like heavy metal or whatever. I like I like hip hop. Let's see what the local hip hop music is. And it's if you've listened to hip hop, it's got all the words in there, all of them. But on the radio, you're not going to hear those words. It's going to be censored as hell. You're not going to hear it. You know, you, there's so many words you're not going to that are censored. 
You I don't like that. I did not know that. Really? That's. I mean, like, I know. I've, I didn't know it was like an FCC regulation. I figured like the channels it, like had their own censorship. Like the private companies did their own censorship. I didn't realize it was like a public. That's same with wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Now is is this like part of your First Amendment thing? Like, is it wrong? Should it be? I don't know. Should it be protected? Should those airway public airways be protected of that kind of stuff? I don't know. I don't I, think cuss words should constitute because, like, what is it? Freedom of speech, and then there's like <laughs> the, there's like unless something, right? Unless you're inciting some kind of violence, you can't say like fire in a theater because you're inciting something. But you can say whatever you want. I mean, cuss words, like, come on, like, what harm is that doing? Like, who gets to decide if a word is bad or I've not? I've had this argument with so many people. I don't believe there are bad words. I don't, there's no such thing as a bad word. Agreed. Everything is just how people Everything's, treat it. Everything, and when it comes to language, la we use language for intent, mm -hmm. what our intention is. If I say, oh my God, I just shit my pants, or, oh my gosh, I just pooped my pants. It's okay to say, oh my gosh, I pooped my pants. That's fine. But if I say, oh my God, I shit my pants. Whoa, whoa, watch your, watch your language, buddy. What? Wait a minute. You know exactly. We, I said the exact same thing. My intention is to let you know, hey, I just had an accident. But, you know, people, some people will freak out because you said the word shit because that's a bad word. It means the exact same thing as poop. But apparently that's a bad word. See, there's no such thing as bad. That's not a bad word. See, I can get things like, like words like bitch or like the C word that I don't want to say. I just don't like the word. I feel like it's very mean. Like the C-U-N-T word. I just don't like saying it. But like, I feel like those, I can get why those are bad words because those are words that are like specifically created with the intent to like insult someone. You know, Sometimes, but not always. Yeah, like, oh, hey, bitch. Like, what's Danny, up? you're a bad bitch. Thank you. See, okay. Exactly. But that's like new though. It didn't start out that way. It, language is evolving exactly so at what point are we gonna be like but i don't know like because like fuck or shit you know that's not like hey i'm meaning to insult you i guess it's just like seen as like a more vulgar but every, but, way to but say again, that but like why is that okay vulgar you know i can call you like if i called you a bitch that's mm -hmm. a bad word you would say mm -hmm. but i could call you i could call you a pig you're a pig Oh shit! I didn't think about it because it's thinking, all intent in how I'm using that word. I don't get it. Doesn't it. matter what the word. There's no such thing as a bad word. It's all about intent. Hmm. So, Danny's a pig. Oh, yeah. She's an ugly pig. I don't know about that. She's an ugly bitch. Definitely the pig. You know what I mean? There's no the, the it's the intent behind yeah. it. There's not the word. I don't know. I don't know why words so, are bad words. I don't know what, what the government that's my, has to do with that That's what I'm that saying. Either. There are no bad words. But why do people give these words power for whatever reason? It should, there shouldn't be. I just don't believe there should be bad words. I think you can say anything you want. Yeah, that's, that's a really bad precedent. If the government is like, hey, on our radio, we don't want these words because we deem them bad words. Like, what if one day, like, whatever other word, like, why can't that well, there's words. Well, there's words, on, there's words like gun. Sometimes, sometimes you can't use the word gun on the radio. What? Why? If it's, uh, I think if it's like in a rap song and they're saying, you know, I'm going to pull out my tech nine, I'm going to pull out my gun and I'm going to pull out my 45. I think of it, if it's like in a rap type thing with that kind of intent or message behind it, I think they block that out a lot of the times. I don't like this at all. That's complete I, censorship of speech. Like what's to stop that from setting a precedent for like one day we can like, I don't know if the government becomes oppressive or like whatever anarchistic shit. And then it's like, hey, you know, like well, freedom, revolution. They're going to be like, you know what? Bad word. Can't say it on the radio. Yeah. I mean, but you can still say it. You just can't say it on the radio because it's a public yeah. airwave. And I think they just That's say, censorship. I think it is. But I, I guess it. Yeah, it is a form of censorship. But but they're not censoring people from like I'm doing this right now and I'm not being censored. And I can say, you know, we've obviously said it all. Yeah, so but I'm not censored, but I can't. I couldn't be on the radio, and then they'd have to censor all my bad words. Yeah, but the government says, you know, freedom of speech. If they're the ones that have to uphold that, then they're the ones that can't be making like laws against that in their own like public services or whatever. I mean, even though they do, you know, like the Constitution's more like a recommendation is how the government treats it. It's like, ah, oh, these are the recommended guidelines, but feel free to take like any deviation that you want, you know, as long as you know the general public doesn't catch wind of it, you know. But I don't know. The government's its own thing. I'm just government sucks 
the government sucks, but the government's going to have to suck when governments are just going to suck no matter what. There's just too many people. There's too much money. There's too little people in power. Any, I mean, anytime we've, we've done, we've, you know, sex is too good. We've created too many people. Right, like yeah. life was probably better when it was when we were in our smaller tribes of like a hundred and fifty yeah, people. Vote. Everyone had a say. You no, know, before like, like when we were like you know real young, you know, thousands of years ago, we were just like tribes of a hundred people just living off the land, living you know, being villages, helping each other out. I would love that. That's what we I, need I to be. To that. The only thing that sucked is you know you twist an ankle, you get a, you get a little scratch on your arm or your leg. That's that's a death sentence. You know, there was no medic medicine back there. You wanted to get you want to get sick back then. You know, that's the only thing. If you could take, you know, our medical and you know accomplishments and bring those back, you know what we need. What we need a cataclysmic event to just like wipe out like a lot of people and we're just gonna kind of start over. I think that's probably happened before. I'm not gonna disagree with that i mean i guess it has happened before there was a time i think they said when there was was it ten thousand, maybe ten thousand people on earth at one point after a giant cataclysmic event happened um i don't know that's interesting to look into yeah it's been we could done. use that we could right i'd i'd be okay with that even if i was one of the few people to go if even if i was one of the many people to go like that's Start over, that. start over, wipe it all out. Big meteor comes in and says, hit the reset button, boom. I mean, some yeah. things make it and it starts all over. Wipe out, because just think about it, if that happened, everything would get wiped out and everything would start growing over. These cin- the cities would crumble, infrastructure all around the world would just crumble and get grown over and taken over by the planet as we're starting to start over again, except for, you know, we've got some knowledge we've got some i don't know it'd be an interesting maybe that's what god is it's just this guy up there just playing and just watching interesting shit happen like all right they've gotten to this place where it's pr- they're, they're going to mars they got this crazy asshole from south africa shooting cars in outer space maybe it's time we uh wipe out and start all over again and see what happens like a little sandbox universal yeah. sandbox that'd be cool <laughs> for him I mean, I guess we're cool, too. We're all living in it. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you believe in after death. I feel like I die and I'm just, oh, that's gone. That's my time's over. So, like, whatever happens next, not my problem. Or, I guess, not to my benefit, but it's also just not my problem. You know, I wouldn't want to, That wanna, you like, know of. I mean, I'm hoping. I'm really hoping it just... Uh, I don't know. I Heaven would be cool. Except, like, I don't know, according to most major religions, since I'm not that religion, I'm going to hell. Or, like, whatever that is. But, like, what do you think about hell? I don't think there are... As I don't I don't know. I don't think there's a hell. I don't think you die and uh go to hell because you didn't happen to believe in a certain certain belief or a certain person or deity or story or whatever. I don't believe <clears throat> if you don't believe in the Jesus story, you go to hell. I don't believe that. So I don't believe there is a hell. Do you think there's a heaven? No. Afterlife? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. afterlife, oh. yes, but just not the like good bad place. Okay, when you say heaven or hell, I don't think as what we would think as a Western civilization. When I think of the word heaven or hell, you know, I think of the you know the the Christian type, like story. reward or punishment after you die. Yeah, eternity of suffering or eternity of bliss. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's one or the other. I th- I think it's I don't I don't, I don't know what the fuck do I don't know. I don't. I know. I, I know that nobody knows. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows. We can all think we know. You can talk to the staunchest. Pick, pick a religion. They have the answer. No, like a real hard Christian, a real hard uh, Buddhist, a real hard whatever. They've got their hardcore beliefs. What they? I know this happens when I die. I know I'm coming back as something else. I know I'm going to be going to heaven. I know you're going, not going to. You're like nobody knows. But we all like to think we know, you know? I don't think. I I think I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I think something happens. I think something happens. I've done some psychedelic drugs back in the day Mm -hmm. where it kind of opens up your thinking like, 
holy cow that's possible that's something what is, what what that's that's a weird feeling that's a weird thought that's i'm looking at something weird i'm experiencing something weird what is this it's not natural but there's something there to it i mean i when i mean it's not natural i mean it's not a natural feeling when i don't mm-hmm. when you when you haven't done a certain type of psychedelic whatever it may be you know that certain ones out there do different things and of course all this was a long time ago like statue of limitations are over by the, when i did this stuff. of course yeah absolutely but it does open your mind to just different questions and different ideas. And there's there's just, I don't know. There's something, something has to happen when you die, when the lights go off. Something, and who knows, maybe it might just be for a brief moment. Maybe it might be, um, you know, the I think a lot of people think like the DMT gets released from your pineal gland, I guess, right? After you die. And it's like this intense psychedelic trip where you just get blasted off into another universe. Maybe that's what it is. And it's just a quick afterlife type, quick psychedelic drug that got released into your body really quick. So you have, maybe that's just a designed death. So everybody has a peaceful exit and then nothing happens. I don't know. It could be anything. Who knows? Who knows? The options of what happened are infinite. And they could be as little as nothing happens. Or, I mean, who knows? Maybe there is a heaven and a hell. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, it's just as likely as anything else, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, from what, from what we know. We know very little. We know very Sorry, little. Sorry, we know nothing. We, we know Just nothing, but from what we think we know. How about from what we think we know when we observe outer space, when we just are, we just look at ourselves from outer space and we look down upon us and we see this blue marble floating in infinity. And so then you think if that's real, because that's in question mm-hmm. for some people. But if, you know, it's real and, and you look out in space and it, it does go infinity we can't, we don't know what infinity is. We can't really grasp that concept because it's such an insane concept of what forever, forever is, infinity is. So, like, it's possible that, who knows? It's all possible. Every scenario you can possibly think of. Like, who knows? Maybe we die and then wake up on some other, who knows, dimension into a whole nother, who knows? Who fuck? Who knows? It could be really great, though. Have you heard that theory about our reality not being real at all? Like, there's this theory... Simulation theory? Similar, but it has to do with black holes. Essentially, there's this theory, like, floating around that, like, our Mm. reality isn't real. Like, what we are experiencing is a projection on the surface of a black hole. Where's the projection coming from? So, a black hole is, like comes from like a singularity which is like mass is so heavy you know everything gets sucked in so like the reason that it's black all around is because not even the light that gets sucked in can escape so whenever it sucks something in there's like this law in the universe that's like you know matter cannot be created or destroyed only transformed or like the simple phrase matter cannot be created or destroyed so like whenever a black hole like sucks in a planet or like any sort of matter it can't just the laws of the universe say that that can't just disappear you know it's not really matter is that where dark matter would come into place perhaps or no is that something different not something different okay but that information it's still real like the laws say it can't go anywhere it can't can't be destroyed it can't just disappear yeah is that is that a law or is that a theory i it's a i'd say a law is that a law that can be that can't really be tested can it that's what's complicated i i can't dispute that i'm not like a physicist but so far as to say I think it's a lot. I think it's been declared a lot. Matter cannot okay. be destroyed. So whenever, like, say a planet gets sucked into a black hole, like, it's crushed or whatever, but the matter, like, the what they call, like, the information of that planet can't just disappear. It has to be held somewhere. So maybe it's, like, light that the information simply can't get past, like, this gravity. So there's this theory that, like, since... No, I think I know where it's going. But so, like, let's going. say a black hole, like, engulfs the Earth. The information, like, all the experiences all the time of everyone on it, anything that's ever happened on Earth in whatever dimension you want can't just 
be erased from reality. It gets sucked into the black hole and like the information's floating around. But that's around not matter. Black hole. That's not matter. It is. Like the uh, time... you and I are matter. How we've moved is matter. Like But our but what we've done, our actions aren't matter. This podcast isn't matter. This will disappear and it'll just disappear. It's not yeah. matter. So that won't transfer, right? Like well, time time and things that have happened. Uh, isn't matter just actual physical stuff? Like sure, like this microphone <sighs> is matter, but the conversation through the microphone is not matter. I'm not entirely sure. So space time itself um, is a completely different topic in which I, you know, I haven't read enough about it to be able to tell you. I know that there are like theories that essentially say that like time is essentially like a loaf in which everything in the universe exists at once, past, present, and future. And like, depending on like what view you have of something, you can either be looking at the past or the future, something like that. Essentially, everything exists at the same time. You're simply... Your presence only lives, your consciousness is only aware of like a certain moment. Um, so I don't know how that would reflect in terms of matter. Um, but essentially, as the theory goes, like without disputing that, is that whatever got sucked in is now like the information is floating around in a black hole and being like projected to the surface trying to get out. So what we're experiencing is almost like a recording of something that already happened. So it's not real. We're just the replay of it. Wow. We're the replay of something that happened. Something like that, yeah. So we're not Why quite are, real. This already are, happened. Are but. we are we experiencing this now? Or are we experiencing it a long time ago? And this is just on an endless loop of projections on a bla- on this black hole or from this black hole. So... I think it, the answer would be like, we already experienced this. Is it this? a projection? When, when, okay, so I guess where I thought you were going... When you were saying it's a projection, as I was thinking, everything that gets sucked into this black hole is almost being shot out on the other side as like a movie projector. But like, where is it going? Like, what do you mean? At the edge of the black hole. So like at the edge of it. So we're at the so this is a replay on the edge of the black hole. That's essentially the theory, at least. So like a black hole is made up of two parts, a singularity, which is like a point in the universe that is so condensed that it has no dimensions, no like spatial dimensions. So like it's not one dimensional, it's not two dimensional, it's not three dimensional, whatever. Um, So it's just a point in space, no dimensions. What is this? The the middle of a black hole? Yeah, it's called a singularity. And it's because it's like, it has, what is it? It's so dense that like the gravity around it, like its force of attraction is so great that like as this tiny little point moves around the gravity around it's so big that like not even light can escape for a certain radius right. you know some are stronger than others some are bigger than and others. is it spinning i i don't think so yeah. it's just if it moves i'm not sure if they is, all it, a, move. is it is it i imagine it's a spherical then a spherical sphere yeah i would i would assume so if it's like the general same general point um but so the information would be projected outside the singularity somewhere in like that um, field of gravity mm-hmm. that it's bringing in. So maybe it's just like dispersed. Before maybe it gets, it's like before it gets sucked in? After like, it gets sucked in. After it's been destroyed, quote unquote. After it's been... Uh, on the uh, So would it be on maybe the other side of the black hole? Or is there no other side of the black hole? It's a sphere. So it would be like a three-dimensional but the, clog in space. There's no other side to a black hole. Because it's a sphere. Mm-hmm. So it gets trapped in this sphere. But where is it going? It's just... Like, it's just but what somewhere around there i don't know they don't know what happens wow, so black holes are so fascinating yeah they don't know what happens when something gets sucked in but I like know. it's just according to that law that matter they, can't be created or destroyed that like theoretically if that if that law is true then that information from the universe those little particles like those little zeros and ones that code the universe have to be stored in this area somewhere that's that's the theory it, they just have to be somewhere there now that they've been absorbed so that could be us. You know, we could be a replay of something that already happened, including experiences, emotions. You know, the universe works in very deep and mysterious ways. Maybe that can be like synthetically, like artificially recreated too. And we wouldn't have any idea. Consciousness, emotions, feelings, thoughts, whatever. Not just like the physical movement. What's the point? What's the point of it all? And there's nothing we can do about it. There's not. So. You know, isn't that funny? <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, that, that's a, 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 a wow. I've never heard of that. What's it called? projection theory or something i have no <laughs> idea it's uh, you can probably google theory we're a projection on a black hole right black hole pro- yeah yeah i think it, I don't know if it was black like hole s- projection theory shouldn't that be the name of it 
Yeah, I don't know if it was. I'm an idiot, and so I'd like to. I'd like. I think it should be named for idiots like me to understand. Projection black hole theory. I mean, I think at the point black of like hole projection theory. Black hole projection theory. I like that. Yeah. No, I, I feel like that that would just be great for everybody to understand. Yeah. Just, hey, by the way, <laughs> and like, you know, black hole project PHPT. Oh yeah, PHPT. PHP. Yeah, we've been talking about that. <laughs> you call it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> theory. Yeah. <laughs> That's. People would remember that. People would say yeah. that. That would, ca- that would be slang. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's a that's a thing. I don't think any of it matters. I don't think we're ever going to know anything. And, like, honestly, it's cool to, like, read about, but I don't give a shit. Like, we're, we're going to die. We're here. It's we're experiencing it no matter what this experience is, mm-hmm. whether a projection or a memory or a simulation or a dream or whatever. Regardless, we're all having our own experience. This is all our own journey. We make of mm-hmm. it what it is, and maybe it's – for nothing maybe it's for man i don't know i like when people say like you know do you think we have a purpose in life i like to say no like i don't think humans were meant to be created like i think the fact that there's life on this planet is a coincidence that life and consciousness is a byproduct of the creation of the universe you know we weren't the intention we were a byproduct of some chemical reactions that happened to happen there was probably no intention right exactly it was an accident byproduct and so like there is no purpose which means like hey you've been gifted this really cool experience the universe doesn't expect you to do anything with it what a really cool idea to look at you've been gifted with this really cool experience Uh uh-huh the universe doesn't expect you to do anything with it or like repay it like a government grant like this is just yours now so like do what you want with it you know like don't think you have to look for an experience do what makes you happy in this life and like experience the gift that's been given to you i don't know um can you say that one more time the get the experience the, what say it one more time it was so good this Li- is an ex- life, life is an experience a gift gosh darn it sorry I, i'm fucking it up you say it you said it so good life is an experience that has been gifted to you life is an experience that has been gifted to you i, ha- I have to remember that that's beautiful oh, thank you did you come up with that i just said it just now i'm not even sure if that was exactly what i said Oh my gosh! I just, I'll have to remember at the okay. I have that's really that's beautiful. Thanks. Because it is what a beautiful way to look at it. It really, could, you know, oftentimes again, and I think social media might, has a lot to do with this. But well, who cares what the media, what 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 the reason is? A lot of times we get so negative and we just think about fuck, life sucks, traffic sucks, people sucks. I just want to get out in the woods and hunt. But really, don't think about that like. Yeah, this is, it it is an interesting experience. And as far as we know, we're only going to get this experience once. I know, like. We didn't ask for it. And, you know, a lot of us, and a lot of us probably, look at you privileged people there. Of course, life is great. You weren't born in Congo working in a coal tan mine. That person probably doesn't think life is a but who knows i don't know it's still it yeah roll the dice well speaking on like a first world not you know working in a sweatshop in some third world country kind of perspective because obviously i don't have that perspective to share but like i don't know i like seeing that perspective like there is no there's life is an experience that has been gifted to you so like you know when you talk to people that you know they just um like went through a breakup or something they're like you know i never want to date again i never want to experience this again it's just like why not? You know, like, I get it. Like, I get that pain sucks. You know, I've been through my fair share of, like, loss and grief. and A lot like, of people deal difficulty. with pain different ways. And, like, heartbreak and stuff. <clears throat> but, like, here's a, have you ever been in love? Oh, yeah. Would you give, if you had to, like, ex- what is it? Would you give up love if it meant that you also never had to experience, like, the grief and loss that came after it? No comment. No comment. I don't know. I just... Okay. Would I give up love if I knew I wasn't also... If it didn't come with the bad stuff? Mm -hmm. So you either give them both up or you keep them both. Love in general? Or are you just talking about... Like like, romantic love. Like being in love. Not just like I love my kids. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I don't know about that. That's a tricky question. Or even love for your kids. Or love for your family. Or love for what you do. You know... Golly, that's that's a really... Having kids is, it's an insane experience. It's really, really insane. You don't, you don't understand. I, I, I never understood what crazy love 
it, I mean, it's insane. And I think about uh, it's so I it drives I I cannot hear bad stories on the news. I don't like to listen to the news. A lot of it's just all bad stories. I don't need that shit in my life, especially when they talk about kids. I can't handle that. I just heard a story about this local kid here that was just shot at his house. They have <clears throat> he was doing chores and the house got shot up and he got killed. He wasn't a bad kid, nothing. They don't know who did it. It was just a random whatever. And they they did a piece, you know, they did the thing on the news. They were interviewing his dad and he, he's just crying. Just, you know, I, why this loss? It just it just feels empty. Like I I couldn't imagine if anything were to happen to one of my kids, I do not know how I would handle it. I don't know how how parents handle with the loss of a child. I, I, I don't think I could handle it. I, I am so afraid a lot of the times about, about that. I know it's, you know, you shouldn't worry about it. You shouldn't even think about it. But I mean, I don't know. I can't help but think about it sometimes if something like that, something, something were to happen. If I were lost one of them, I don't, I really, you want to hear a crazy, one of the crazy thoughts in my head. This is the crazy, this is an insight to me, I guess, about how fucking crazy I am. Like I fantasize is the wrong word because I'm not fantasizing about what happens if my kid dies. Mm -hmm. But uh, for lack of a better word, to fantasize like it, I've thought if 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 something were to happen, if I saw him get hit by a fucking bus or something, holy shit, he's dead! Bam, instantly. I have the thought of kill myself really fucking quick right now and hurt, and save him in the afterlife and just be with him in the afterlife. Like go after him doesn't make any sense that's probably not gonna but like that's how bad i want to fight and, and, and be there for him like he just got killed i'm killing myself immediately right now with no regard i have to hurry up and quick 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 do it at the same exact time so i can hurry up and catch him or do whatever like that's the kind of fucking crazy love it's yeah i don't know if, yeah i don't know I, I, the love for it's inc incredible what i give up i don't know I don't know. That's a tough question. I don't know if I would give that. I might say, yeah, if I'm guaranteed to not have that heartbreak, then not have that love before kids, I would, I, I would say, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let me ask you a question. That's like a heart. That's, that's something to think about forever. Yeah. Go ask away. Were your kids planned? We were, yeah, they weren't accidents. Yeah, they weren't accidents. They weren't necessarily planned. The first, no, uh, my son was. We tried. We had a hard time. Went to, so you tried to have kids. We really tried with that one, and then the second one, we were like, we weren't being safe. We we're like, mm -hmm. if it happens, she had a. Without getting personal, there was a chance that it wasn't going to happen, so we mm -hmm. just weren't safe. And it's like, if it happens, it happens. Awesome, and if by this point it doesn't happen, then we're gonna have. Um, tubes tied or, or vasectomy whatever to prevent prevent it but it happened so yeah well there's your answer i guess but you don't understand it you don't understand it until you have it so now it's like you're right but you don't but at some point you did make that decision you were like something about having children is going to it's something that i want to experience like you already made yeah. that choice and yeah. now you do have the consequences. And you have to do the consequences. Yeah, with making that choice, you do have the consequences. But forgive me for suggesting that I don't, you don't seem like the type to have traded that experience of like having your kids and like no, being I, with No, I wouldn't trade that experience. Like it's, I love being a dad. Then there's your answer. Yeah, I love it. I get, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's such a morbid conversation. But ask, if something were to happen, ask me, then ask me. Do you think if we'd had this conversation before you had them, it, no, because it would have changed anything? Probably not, because you don't you don't understand. You it's something you don't understand unless you experience it. I think. I don't think you can actually quite. I, I don't know. Maybe some people could, but I don't know that I could really. But different people love different things, right? Uh, people love different things, but when you have a a child, everybody loves their. There's outliers. But everybody loves their child. What about Human people beings. that love their spouses more? Don't tell me you haven't seen that. Love their child? Love their spouses more than their child? Mm -hmm. No. I don't think that's possible. You don't hear new, like stories in the news like, you know, kids are neglected because, I, I, you know, that's mom. That's a broken human being. Gosh, that's such a broken human being. That's mentally 
So that's just that's the outlier. I mean, is like, it? It, that's got that is the outlier. What about the new movement where people don't want to have kids? They'd rather have dogs or focus on their career or just stay by themselves because they like what? If, I'm fine with that. But that's exactly it. Different people love different things. I don't think people oh, that don't those want people, kids would feel that same attack. But those people that it, it, those people that are I I don't want to have kids. Blah blah blah. But if they did have one. Holy shit, that changed. Holy cow, I didn't know the love. I didn't know the love I would have for this thing. What about all the women that give up their kids for adoption? <laughs> Ask them how hard it is to give them up once it's been born. I think it varies I on think the woman. Right, it does. But I, th- I think a lot of them have a hard time with that. And I bet you a lot of them have a lot of regrets their whole life thinking there's a piece of them that's out there. And I bet it, I bet you it's a hard life. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, who knows? I can't. I, it's hard to speak for these people. Exactly. But if they kept their kid, it would have been an insane love that like, holy shit, this is, it's just, it's hard not to when you're rich. Because you know, it's, it's an instant love when you know you're keeping it, I guess. It's an instant love and it's just this bond. You see, you look at yourself. Like you want to talk about psychedelics or something that's psychedelic. I look at my son when he's just focused on, like he was focused on a video game the other day. He wanted to put on the headset because you know and talk to people. He's six. He's just having a good time. But but he was so focused. What did he play Fortnite? Yeah, he was playing Fortnite, just so focused. And I was looking at him, and he's just like it looks. And he looks a lot like me. And it's just I'm looking at a miniature. I, I'm looking at like, I it it's just looking at yourself from a different perspective in a different time in a different time period. Like I'm looking at myself when I was six years old. Like that's me. But it's completely not because he's completely his own. Per- he's not like he's not me at all. I mean, in a lot of ways, he's just not like me. But he looks a lot like me. Then my daughter, now she's like me. She's going to be. Uh, that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> that's going to be a tie. I love. I, she's got me wrapped around her finger. But she's a lot like me. And yeah. That's going to be fun later. No. Yeah. I, I mean, it's going to be fun, but. Yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a wild ride. I know. I don't want that. I don't. I was a wild. Yeah. At least she's a girl. Boys are nuts. And I think my son will be not as nuts as I was. I was a nutty kid. I did some stupid stuff. I mean, I still do stupid stuff. but not like, you know, you're 18 and you got, you know, you're a dumb kid like me with testosterone just going through. You're just being wild. I mean, all boys are I'm not all boys, but so many boys are just dumb at that age. With their hormones going flying, you just got your license. Women are, you know, you, you're taste chasing tail. You're drinking some beers. You just get wild. I mean, yeah, I'm not a 18 year old boy either, but I, I yeah, but, I agree. Yeah. I agree. But yeah, we're so much crazier than than 18 year old women in, in, in a sense. I mean, you guys, no, yeah. not you guys, but you know, 18 year old women. They sure they're kind of nuts too, but it's not anything like freshmen guys in college versus freshman girls in college. Like, there's some overlap, but man, yeah, yeah, there's. Yeah. You can see it, yeah. Boys are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your words, not mine, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Black hole projection theory. I really dig that. It's not my favorite, but I, I like I It's interesting. I don't know that I buy it, but it's it's an interesting. It's an interesting theory. You want to hear another one that will blow your mind? Please. All right. So, That's why I wanted you on here because you're really smart and I wanted you to just blow my mind with some cool shit. Thank you. I mean, I got plenty of cool shit I love because, like, who doesn't like learning cool shit? But let's see. This one's called, um, I think the general name for it is, like, field theory. And so, you know, like, growing up in school, they teach you you have matter and you have energy and they're two separate things, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's now, like, you know, looking into, like, string theory and, like, a little bit more into, like, quantum physics and quantum mechanics. Like, as you go deeper Things into theory is kind of done, though, right? No. They haven't, anything, got, haven't they gotten it? They haven't gotten anywhere with it in like 40 years, though, have they? I mean, they have. They've keep they've found more like subdivision, not subdivisions, but subparticles within an atom and the subparticles within those. And like, you know, whatever the God particle, like the essential atom the Higgs boson or something. Yeah. yeah. So quantum mechanics, like the study of like the really tiny, like general relativity is more so like physics on a big level. Quantum mechanics is more like um, physics on like a smaller I, I don't want to say like uh, like a molecular atomic level, like the really, really small shit. And so like as they're going deeper into that, 
you know, they always thought that there was, like, matter and energy. And then you have, like, string theory, which is, like, essentially our reality is made up of, like, tiny vibrating strings of energy. There's, like, different types of vibrations or whatever. So there's this thing called uh, field theory, which is based on an experiment done in, like, 1918. Wow. Called, or 1910. 1910 called the double slit experiment, in which basically they shot. a long time ago. So, yeah, I guess people are watching this. So, like, imagine that there's, like, three slit, like, a slit right here. They would shoot, like, a little atom through this. I don't remember what they shot. Like, an atom through a slit. And, like, when they were observing it or watching it, it would behave like matter and just go through the first slit. But then they would shoot an atom and, like, not film it, not look at it. And it would behave like a wave. It would leave a wave pattern. So, essentially. Are you talking it would change when it was observed? Yes. Isn't that just because the way they were testing it? No. So it when ended up testing it. You're you're doing you're 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 messing around with its environment. It wasn't because it was tested because it was the same environment. The only two things that changed was the observation of the atom as it was being shot out. And what they saw. was... But how were they observing it? With their eyes and with the camera. That's the observation. And then when they turned around, they turned the camera away like no one was looking at it. It behaved as a wave. So basically. But how do they, they know that if they weren't observing it? Because it left when it was shot through the slit. Uh-huh. It left. Um. When it was being observed, it just created, like, one straight line through the slit. And then when it wasn't observed, it left a wave pattern okay. as, like, an imprint on the other side when it was shot, showing that it had gone through three slits instead of just one. Okay. So it was by the leftover remnant pattern of it being shot through. And so basically what this concluded was, like, okay, we thought matter was solid. But what this is kind of telling us is that maybe matter doesn't exist at all, that everything, everything, everything is made up of energy, little strings of energy. So what the field theory is, is that since matter doesn't exist unless it's observed. So basically, like, this whole room... Because we're observing it, it it exists? No. It always exists, but when we're observing it, it, like, condenses. It's like if you had a bowl of soup that was just kind of, like, everywhere waving around, and then the minute you look down at it, it all condensed into one little ball. So field theory is basically... And this little ball is Adam. So field theory is basically, like... Matter exists in a field of potentiality where it exists like having a bowl of soup and that's like matter. The atom exists in the whole bowl simultaneously. And then when you look at it, wherever it is at that moment, it'll condense in that one spot. So the field theory is matter exists in a field of potentiality until observed, it becomes matter. So what this says is when matter isn't being observed, it's like a pool, like a, not a cesspool, I don't really know, but like a pool of just energy. So right now, everything that we're not observing, everything that I can see right now is, you know, it's solid, it's tangible because I'm in some way looking at it, observing it. But behind me, you know, it could be just nothing. Nothing is solid. Nothing is real because it's not being observed. And like the thing is, like the second you turn around to look at it, it'll consolidate. But is that for you? Because right now it's solid for me when I'm looking at it. It's when it's being observed by anything. You know, I well, okay. I can't anything, explain you that. So, uh, but yeah, what is, what, 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 yeah, then you have to, under, what, hmm. The simple statement is it condense, it exists in a field of potentiality, of being, energy. Of always being observed, but, but shit's all, always until being it's observed. observed. And how does it know what to form into? That's exactly the question. Like, why, all that they have is a description of what is happening. Like, when it's not observed, it behaves as a particle. When it is observed, it behaves as energy. They don't know why they don't know what observed means but they know that there is an awareness in the universe that somehow the universe like what we are made of knows when we're looking at it is the statement of that is like that's that's the moral of the story somehow mm. and there's like they don't have an answer to that yet because that's the thing that well, like science and physics is something outside of us is always watching and is always observing maybe the universe is alive you know that's science like physics is really just making more questions like everything that you answer just ends up in another question because like okay so you found this particle what what does it mean to be observed what how does it know this why is it changing what does observation have to do with it what is observation you can never get the answer for anything i mean you always Mm -hmm. ask why but now you know this uh cool theory that of things that happen like i can't tell you why it happens all i'm telling you is like this is if it's happening if again very difficult to test in like an actual reality but in a lab setting that's what they determined the like particle energy matter behavior or whatever. I think I was thinking of superposition. Super, uh-huh. 
I think that's what I was thinking of when it when it's being observed and it changes. Like it's in one place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's also it also I mean it's different because like um superposition is different than this because this has to do more No, with I know that's what I, when I was asking you about if it changes when it's being observed. I think that's what I was thinking about mm-hmm. superposition not this. That's where I was yeah, but that's also a thing. Like, right. how how do those particles know when they're being observed exactly? Why is right. it like human observation that changes it? Like, could a dog look at it? Could a plant react? Well, that's what to I was it? saying. That's why stuff is always being observed because mm-hmm. there's always living shit. There's always stuff observing it. Just because it's not a human consciousness observing it doesn't mean it's not being observed by that ant or a flying bug or a mm-hmm. bird in the sky or. So that's what we don't know, and there's no way for us to prove it because, like, maybe or you know, it could be aliens from light years away they have this crazy powerful telescope that are observing us and that's why it's all maybe like that's that's exactly (laughs) it or maybe like maybe like say there's like a dog right there say the dog has no influence on anything it's just humans for some reason it's just you and me so like i could be looking this way you know dogs looking dog is in the pool dog like i don't know is experiencing that but the second i turn around it's going to solidify because there's no way for me to observe whether another observer has an impact without me observing it but there's always going to be an observer, right? There's always no. an observer. No. Why not? Because we don't know who is the observer. Like I'm saying, it could be us but if and it's... not the dog. But the minute I change my attention, I, the observer, solidify it. Maybe the dog had no effect on it, but I have no way of knowing that. Until we determine who the observer is, we don't really know the impact of who or what it is like. Well, it's super, it's it. super fucking fast. It's super fast. But mm-hmm. I guess probably in this theory, time doesn't really exist. So when I go... Try to look behind me real quick to try and catch you, see it grow real quick and put mm-hmm. together, solidify. Mm-hmm. It already happened. I'm not fast enough. It's what, faster than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's no way for us to know. I mean, maybe there's a way for us to know. You know, I'm no astrophysicist, but as far as I, you know, my education takes me, which is not much, but, you know, I'm no Stephen Hawking. That's that's going to be something, you know, Brian Green or something has to answer. Hmm. I don't, I don't Stephen know. Hawking. I don't know who Brian Green is. He's this uh, really cool dude. He's like professor of like mathematics and physics at Columbia University, like pretty well established physicist. If you look up Brian Greene, he has documentaries over like space time, the cosmos and stuff. And like they're animated. So you get like an actual visual of like what he's explaining. And it's super cool because like you get a I want to check that out. There's this another dude that I really want to check out that does this. uh, What's his name? Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, I do love him. He's like the rock star of astrophysicists. Um, What is it? Brian Cox. I think Brian Brian Cox. Cox. I think that's his name. I think that's his name. That sounds familiar. And he's he does real. He breaks that kind of stuff down really really Mm -hmm. cool, really easily to digest for you know simpletons like myself. I mean, same. It's hard stuff. Right. And then but he does like this cool animation thing with all the stars and like all the galaxies and just kind of projects it in a way to kind of be able to understand it and look at it. And yeah, I've always been fascinated with that kind of stuff. And just I mean, you look at all these stars. I mean, they say, you know, I grew up in Michigan where we have beaches everywhere and you just see all the sand on a beach and every little tiny, tiny grain, grain of sand. There's more stars in the sky than there are grains of scant, grains of sand on all of Earth. And if you ever just been to one beach, you just grab a handful of sand. It's like, and then a, a, every star is a solar system. Like it's got planets. It's got a planetary. You know, it's got planets around it and potential for whatever. And that just goes on for ever and ever and ever and ever. Just that stuff trips me out. Speaking of Neil deGrasse Tyson, his uh, Cosmos episode one. Like like his Netflix one when it first came out on Netflix, like his episode one, I think it's called What's Our Address or Where Are We? Where Are We From? Something. I think it's, maybe it's Earth's Address. Season one, episode one, whatever. That'll freaking, that tripped me out. Like it shows, it shows like your, it show you, uh, you and me sitting here and then it'll pan out and it'll show my house. And then it'll pan out and it'll show like independence and it keeps like the sky view and it keeps going, going, going. He's like, here's Earth. Here's Earth in the solar system. Here's the solar system in this whatever. What What's after solar system? Galaxy. Yeah. Here's our, our galaxy. And then here's this galaxy to this. And I just, you know, he just sees, feels so ig- insignificant and small. It's like, oh, it'll trip you out. Trip you out. It's great, though, isn't it? Just being insignificant and small. We have no purpose. We can do whatever we want. Well, that's true. We can. The only people limiting us are each other. So, 
on a social contract. Like we kind of all agree, hey, probably shouldn't go around killing our, each other. Most even of we us could. agree we could, like you know, have that anarchy. Yeah. Kind of. But we shouldn't. We you should, know. but why? Who knows? This is our whatever. I why don't know. Not? I like not worrying about. I don't know. Me I, too. But I grew up privileged, you know, with roads and firefighters and police and you know general education. I don't. I don't want to go to anarchy. I really appreciate that. Me neither. But. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Some people are for it. Some I, That's what I'm saying. It's just so funny how there's there are people that look at it like it is my world. And I will do whatever I want. I'm just being an anarchist and I'm just going to start fires and do whatever the fuck I want cuz this is my world. I'm mm. down for that. That's that's how it should be for the people that want it. And you know there are like patches of land around the United States where it's you can do that. You know, you take whatever the hell you want, but there's like no law. So if someone wants to burn your house down, they can burn your house down. There, yeah. there ain't shit you can do about it, you uh-huh. know. But yeah, there's places where you, you want to live in anarchy. Go all over the world. There's anarchy all over the world. You asked me earlier if I believe in a hell. Mm-hmm. I kind of do when you look like earth, hell on earth. I mean, like just I, I don't I shouldn't pick on Africa, but I mean, you can put the whole world inside of Africa, like all the countries in, inside. So Africa is huge. So I'm not specifically naming any place, but just go to a lot of places in Africa. And just it's hell there. It's just like these Basic slaves over conflict minerals. Uh, just poverty, poverty everywhere. There's, I mean, there's these pygmy people in the Congo. They get treated like animals. They get hunted down and not treated like people. They get cannibalized. They get killed in front of their families. It, 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 and they they don't have a whole lot of water. So there's they're trying to teach these people how to get these wells so they can have access to fresh, fresh water so they can drink. It's, it's crazy sad. It's like... This stuff's going on in the world right now. Like, you know, pygmy people are being treated like animals. Like, literal, they're not people. They're animals. They're getting hunted and killed. Just torture. It's crazy. I mean, this this world's a naughty place outside of uh, first world countries. You start getting into the third and fourth and fifth world countries, shit gets like hell on earth in a lot of places. But if that's all you know, you know, for you, there's work. Because, like, there's places better than us. You know, there's situations better than us. But, you know, for me, relative, like, my experience has been great. But. Oh, we know. got it good. Sure. It's all relative. It is relative. Yeah. Which. I don't know. That's it. I, You know what? That didn't really have any, like, point. I don't know why I said it. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. That was, but, yeah. No, I'm. No anarchy for me. Me neither. Anymore. I need more. Maybe a little. Maybe a little. Yeah, just just wait till the government s- just censors that when you're on the radio someday. Just oh, he said anarchy. I'll never be. <laughs> I'll no. never be on the radio because they do censor. That's what I love about. Can't this. they just censor you? No, we can. No, they can't censor me. We that, haven't cussed that much. No, we didn't cuss that that much until um, we talked about cussing on the radio. That, 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 right, that but of. you know, like, yeah, I, I couldn't have had the carrot gang conversation on the radio even if we didn't cuss even if you took all the cuss words out that'd probably be a difficult sell to put on the radio i imagine a lot of the fcc is probably run and influenced heavily influenced by big companies like coca-cola and pepsi type entities that hey we want to sell our stuff and we don't want it to be associated with this kind of talk so let's make a safe place where we can s- Sell our product and not have it associated with what we deem bad words. Hmm. I don't know. Who knows? I, I'd bet on it. Well, thank God for the internet and private companies, right? Thank God for capitalism. Yeah. Free markets or whatever. Free market, baby. Mm-hmm. And that's how you're going to blow up with your social media. Man, I am hoping. I I've, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could do a 9-to-5 job. I don't do a 9-to-5 job. Artistkc.com. Yes. Got it right that time. Yes, you did. Emphasis on the S after artists. Yes. <laughs> Artistkc.com. Artist KC was taken. So really? Artists KC is what I had to do, yeah. Unless I want to do .org and I don't. I'm excited to get on there and create a profile. Bet. Yeah, I still got to send you the documents and like, I'm doing some work right now. I'm uh, remodeling some of it. I'm adding some features. So, like, I'm adding in, like, a point system, like, on Reddit where you get rewarded with 
points reactivity your likes your comments and you can like redeem that for shit <laughs> look at you like going after the addictive qualities of you got to i mean yeah i, I want people to use my site i want i want i want do those you click money do you feel any kind of confliction there like what's your has it why don't you like social media is it kind of the same reason i am it's just kind of a a zombie creator people are just always on their phone dicking around on social media I'd be okay with that as an introvert, like beats <laughs> face to face. But, but I mean, what's, what's your, do you have, what's your aversion to social media? Cause you just want to keep a private life. Uh, Facebook is, I deleted that. Cause like, you know, mid midlife crisis. And I was like, I don't want to see people's drama anymore. Like, I don't really know you well enough to like, right. Care. Yeah. And then like Instagram, every time I open that, like, I hate to say this, but like, you know, we're being straight up. Like it makes Sold me too feel like not great about my life almost which is weird because like you know you see all these posts of like beautiful people and people traveling you know there's always going to be someone better looking than you smarter than you like doing better than you because oh everybody puts on a front on social media i think that's yeah we all know that you're putting on your very best and trying to but that's the thing like i don't want to care about that like oh Mm -hmm. you're traveling in spain why do i feel bad that i'm like you know sitting at home in the middle of the night like eating cheerios like i haven't been out in like three days and like you're in spain like I don't want to be in Spain. I'm happy here. Like, I'm happy for you. But for some reason, it makes me feel like I'm not valuing what I need to or I need to be where I am. And, like, I don't want that. I'm mm-hmm. happy with my life. And I don't want to go on a place that makes me feel like I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know. Social media. I don't have the energy. I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. I don't feel the need to really share my thoughts with people. It's not even necessarily that I'm a private person person and like i'm actively trying to keep things private it's just like i don't feel the need to make them public and you know for people that do like good for them i wish i had that quality i wish i had the quality to like get a million like instagram followers or whatever but i don't know it's just not me it's just not how i turned out Mm -hmm. and that's okay okay i didn't know if you had something morally or part you know morally against it Mm -hmm. is why you weren't really Oh, like something bad happened to me, so I like deleted. No, no, or I something. thought it was. I thought it was really because you just thought it was bad for society. I, I thought it might have been like it's bad for society because of the studies they've done, especially with like young girls, mm-hmm. like just suicide and depression rates have have skyrocketed, skyrocketed with the advent of invention of Facebook, because it's you know impressionable young girls that are just have bad self-image or whatever and that really exacerbates it and they get bullied i don't know they've done studies on it's just social media is really bad on specifically young young girls preteen i think kind of like a preteenish type type girl so i didn't know if your aversion to social media was something morally connected to something like that i didn't know if it's just eh, i just don't like it Mods. i'm not asking you to, i'm not saying that's right or wrong i'm just curious I, that's where i kind of thought assumed Cause that's what I do. I assume a lot and it's just, I, I, I gotta work on that. I, I don't know. It's just me. Like I get that there are like downfalls and stuff, <clears throat> but I don't know. I guess I feel like if you do get those negative feelings, just like turn it off, walk away. And I know that's like, it's so hard. It's, it's harder said it's than so done. so addicting. But I mean, people are literally, uh, literally addicted yeah. and they don't want to admit it. Because you're not putting a needle in your arm. Mm -hmm. You're not putting a cigarette to your mouth. There's not like this chemical that you know about. Because you're not directly physically doing that type thing or, you know, but, you know, dopamine and stuff is still getting released. Ooh, I got a like. Ooh, I, you know, I, I don't know. There's just so many. I got a lot of issues with social media. And like, I don't like I said, I don't, I, I use it because I quote unquote have to. I don't have to, but I feel like I need to. Sometimes you make sacrifices to be successful, and that means doing things you don't always want to do. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. so if I ever become successful, it'll be worth it. Yeah, and then when you're successful, you can pay someone else to do it, which is <laughs> the great thing the about dream. being successful. That's the dream. Get, get me off this thing. Let me delete all. I mean, you look at, like, um, well, the weird guy, Facebook. What's the weird guy that owns it? You Mark know. Zuckerberg. Yeah, Mark Zuckerberg and all the other guys that invented these social media platforms, they don't use it. They don't have it. They don't let their kids have it. Maybe we should be looking at these creators aren't even using it. There's a reason behind that. You're going to make something and stand behind it if you're, and you're not even going to use it? You know, I mean, 
look at look at Pablo. Uh, not Pablo. Uh, for sure, look at Pablo Escobar. That guy wasn't using coke. Sure was selling a whole shitload of it, knowing it's addicting. Knowing I don't think I'm going to use that shit. Now I don't know. Maybe he was probably using it. I don't know, but I don't think he was. He was no cokehead. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Look at these people. Are there just like? I wonder. I bet you're probably not going to find too many uh, people that had Philip Morris smokers. With addicting things, it seems to be the trend. They recognize that it's addictive, and they know like not and addictive in a bad way. Some things can be addictive and can be good. Exercising can be addictive. That can be good for you, but they know it's a bad addiction. So I don't know. We should be looking at Mark Zuckerberg. He's not using Facebook. Maybe we should. I don't know. Like I said, I I could go down that rabbit hole on my issues with 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 social media and the just the conundrums that that it. So what are your issues with social media? You know, mine. Mine's just that I'm just not that kind of person. Yeah, so what mine, are yours? mine is that what it does to young girls and young kids, what it does to uh, this outrage culture, what it does to society in general. Um, I one of the re- one of the reasons I have this podcast is because this is an art form. You and me sitting around and talk, talking talking one on one like this. When have you done what we're doing right now? One on one and sat down. And just talked. We haven't really touched it. We looked at our phones to look a couple things up. But I'm not here texting anybody. I'm not here looking through Facebook or anything like that. It's it's people don't. It's so rare to find people just have real conversations like that anymore. And that's what we, people. That's what we need. Humans don't need to be talking on a machine to communicate with each other as much as we've been doing like that. And it's just. So my issues is kind of like. Like we're losing a part of who we are and what it means to be a human, I guess. It's just, I like the, I like going out to eat with someone and, and looking at them and having a meal with them and talking to just them and having their attention. But go out to a restaurant this day and age and it is everybody has their phone out. Everybody. And they're just looking at it. And it's a lot of it's just on social media. And I just have a real issue with that. I don't love that. Like, I think there's just... Social media can be fine if you have it in check. But it's it's a drug. And a lot of people don't know how to... We don't know how to wield this drug. It's The internet's been around for 25 years, maybe, that we really know. And it really hasn't gotten really to where we know. It's like past 10, 15 years, maybe, when it's, you know, YouTube and... Facebook and all the social media and stuff is like when it, I don't know it's just we're dealing with something that I don't think our brain is ready for or designed for and we're just going with it and it just gets worse and worse and we're just becoming I don't know maybe this is just the next stage maybe this is a part of evolution you know maybe evolution is is just goes further than you know I mean we're keep keep we're gonna be cyborgs we are cyborgs in a sense with these phones in our pocket. I've got the world's information at my fingertips. Soon I'm going to be able to have it in my eyes and project it and just see it whenever I want, you know? Like some of the stuff Elon Musk is talking about with like connectivity, with the internet in your brain almost. And like you're going to know something. Inst- I don't know. It's just what are we turning into? You want to hear this theory that I have? Please. So... I have this theory about humans and humanity and evolution. You know, like what I used to have this stance where I believed, you know, psychopaths and sociopaths. Do I know any personally? No, but you know, you yeah, know what yeah, they are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you do know any personally, I'd love to hear about that. That seems pretty interesting. Just have one on here, like, hey. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll point you to a couple episodes. <laughs> <laughs> After the show, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but so, psychopaths and sociopaths, I had this theory that, like, you know, people are like, this is a disorder, but in a sense, it's a reflective of like a bigger theory, but this is like for sake of example, that they should be considered more like the next step in human evolution, you know, like sociopaths, that lack of empathy. It's been found that a high number of like, a high number of like executive CEOs are sociopaths or like are on somewhere on the spectrum because those are the people that can make the hard decisions like oh you know fire bill he's got 10 kids and a wife to support you know mom's in the hospital he's like who cares i want to i want that Bottom Ferrari this year. Yeah, yeah those are the people that are being successful and st- like statistics show that so my theory is is that you know 
evolution works in the sense that species evolve in order for like survival of the fittest, right? Life is a competition. Species evolve to be better than other species and thrive. So essentially what's happened is like humanity has somehow reached a peak where we are the thriving species. You know, realistically, we don't have animal competitors. Not realistically, not to the threat of our species. However, we've grown to the point where the threat to our survival is each other. Is us. Yeah. Like the people, like overpopulation, like now instead of competing with animals for food, we're competing with each other. You know, there's not enough food for everybody. There's not enough clean water. We are each other's competition. So I feel like humanity is taking a step or like society on an evolutionary path where the next step in human evolution are humans that can sacrifice each other for their own benefit. Because who's going to survive competing in the resources? Now that it's human versus human, you know, it's going to be the people that, you know, make tobacco. They make their millions. People die off. You know, you're killing people off. You're accumulating more of the wealth. That's exactly it. It is a race for accumulation of wealth and resources. And now we're competing with each other rather than other animals. So that's the next step in human evolution. People who can sacrifice others. And that's my theory. So we're just kind of like this dystopian future of 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 sort of like Hunger Games type thing, but even even darker. Who has the power? Realistically, money, resources, whatever. You yeah, know? yeah. Whoever controls money and resources have the power. The dictators in the country are like the peasants. The dictators don't give a shit about the peasants. Whoever they don't control, give a shit if well, like maybe it's whoever controls they die. whoever whoever controls nuclear. <laughs> I don't know. It's people who are okay benefiting themselves at the expense of others because whatever someone else loses you don't give a shit because you have something to gain you know so you are ultimately yeah this superior but yeah, competitor you, okay golly but that's but but there's going to be a point where there is an uprising and then you know the, the powerful are very few and, and the not so powerful are very many and then they come together and they try to, you know, battle for their survival, for their. But then what's going to happen after they overthrow the rule? <laughs> so then they try to create government. It starts over. It starts like, over you know, try to, try, try to create government. Yeah, but it's French Revolution. You know, there was a revolt. You know, they overtook like the power system at the time. And then, you know, what happened? There's still a power system. It's simply transformed. There's still someone benefiting, someone losing. It's simply enters a cycle because mm-hmm. someone has to win if we are competing against each other there has to be a winner there has to be a loser and that's where humans are at and that but that's my theory but yeah, that's where you're well, that's where they're going or that's where we're going yeah we've already started you know with the ceos being sociopaths you know like you were saying like mark zuckerberg they're creating something addictive something destructive and they you know? know it too yeah but they're not using it because they're smart enough right not to use it in whatever sense you want to you know smart like He's taking the money. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got his big house, his car. You know, he's set for life. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, there are teenage girls killing themselves over his product. Mm-hmm. But he's getting money. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it is that competition. Mm-hmm. That's my theory. I don't know. You know, I didn't study anthropology or any shit like that. But, like, <laughs> that's just a personal thing to, like, throw at you. I like it. Thank you. I like it. It means you're thinking and you're looking at it. it just looking at a different kind of future and looking at it. I, I really like it. I like when people can come up with their own little theories like that. That's dope. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hope it's uh, let's hope it's not so desolate and, uh, you know, let's hope it's better than that. But, yeah. <clears throat> well. At least it ha- it'll happen. I don't know. That's when you want to say, well, at least hopefully it'll happen after your time, right? Or after my time, our time. Who knows? Because, like, again, the uh, How fa- distribution of power. You can even do, like, governments, you know, U.S. and Russia doing their big dick competition. You know, everyone's like, I got the bigger dick, but neither of them wants to whip it out to, like, prove it. Mm-hmm. And then one day, you know. <clears throat> Putin, someone- Putin's got a way bigger dick than Trump. Yeah. Yeah. True, I, Truton's, Truton, Putin, <laughs> Truton. Putin, you know, that guy's coming from some, yeah, that dude's swinging something like that, that homemade axe that I made oh over Oh my there. God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they can see it on the camera. That's pretty yeah, I can see it. <laughs> but it's like that. One day someone's going to 
hit nuke, you know, a bunch of other people are going to die and what? Because they wanted to flex their power. People are going to die at that expense. But, then- but that's your sociopath saying, but that's where you're, I, that's where I think you're kind of, where I don't see that going, at least not that way, because you're saying their sociopath is what I have to gain. But dropping the nuke, every you're like game over for everybody. I'm taking my board and going home because you don't have anything to gain with that. Because that's just, we're at a point now where if, if someone drops a nuke, Boy, that shit. Oh, 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 you guys just dropped one. Well, we're gonna drop our. I mean, just what's gonna happen then? And it doesn't. You don't have to t- drop very many of them to get the kind of devastation it can create on just the environment. Well, how about this for an example? You know how Syria dropped chemical weapons on their like chemical bombs on their citizens, and there was like a crisis about that a few years ago. Yeah. Did you know that the United States also dropped chemical bombs? On the citizens of Syria. Oh yeah, they were saying they did something slightly different, right? They, and they said, "Yeah, we're we're doing." Yeah, I remember the kind of that that hypocritical. The type of chemical bomb that the United States dropped in Syria was this kind that, like, when it drops, like a gas is expelled, and when you inhale it, it starts to essentially feel like you're melting or burning from the inside out, and it starts chemically burning you from the inside out. And the United States dropped those bombs really on Syria. Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I th- Really? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if you know, want another example, the U.S. has it, done plenty no, no, of no, questionable I, shit. No, I will. Ne- I'm not certainly not questioning whether they've done unquestionable shit. I'm just saying, I didn't think that was legal. I thought that was against the code, the Geneva Code, the Geneva Code. Of, God dang, was it Geneva Convention? Geneva, Geneva Convention Code. That's what. There's 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 rules in war. There are. The United States has been doing its own shit just because, like, really, where is the accountability? The United States is, like, the biggest Chemical military warfare, power. Chemical warfare, I don't think. Wow. Boy. I mean, the ICC, the International Crimin- Cor- Criminal Court, doesn't do shit. The UN, the U.S. has, like, veto power on any resolutions. Well, again, yeah, that's, your, that's your, where your theory is going. These people are in power, so. Exactly. Like, okay, here's the best example of this, like, fuck it, but, like, on an international level to the point where, like, it's affecting societies and, like, civilizations as a whole. 9-11, you know? We lost 3,000 people because a country in the Middle East, like, there was a terror- terrorist attack from a country in the Middle East, right? Right. That was 3,000 people in 2001. In 2003, the United States declared the war on terror in order to, oh, like, well, fight we, back against acts of terrorism. We love to have these these wars on words, right? War on terror. What mm-hmm. does that mean? You can't define it. We'll just, we determine whatever terror is whenever we want to have war somewhere. Oh, that's terrorism. Like drugs, war on drugs. Well, what are drugs? Eh, you know, it's this and that. And, and, the, they, and, and drugs aren't fighting back. Terrorism isn't fighting back. You can't have a f- war with something that's not warring with you. Exactly, but they made that pretense that it was, you yeah. know, these countries hate us, so we're going to declare war against people who want to fuck with the U.S. Mm-hmm. And after the war on terror declared in 2003, in the first six years, the United States had killed 650,000 innocent civilians men women and children that had nothing to do with any terrorist groups or terrorist cells and they were referred to as collateral damage oh sure drone drone strikes or and that's exactly atrocious. It. that's like that is the like big picture international relations sort of manifestation of my theory is like the united states it has power because it has flexed it and to other countries it's been like fuck you you know what i don't give a shit if i kill six hundred and fifty thousand of your people just so i can say like don't fuck with me in the future and take 3,000 of mine. Like, that's what we, that. that's just humans. That's how humans have always been. I don't know that we'll ever get to that point. Exactly. It's that continuous. Humans are getting to the point where, like, as soon as the civilization, they're clashing. And, like, now that there's 8 billion people on the planet versus, like, two nomadic tribes, it's on a bigger scale. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's the theory, except, like, it applies, you know, with CEOs, it applies with people, it applies with, like, Pimps and prostitutes, like, hey, I'm going to make my money by, like, who the fuck cares what happens to these girls? And then it applies to, like, governments and societies, too. It's all Well, that's scaled. where we, that's where and why we have religion then, right? To curtail that and try to, hey, guys, religion figured out, uh, at least some religions figured out, hey, this is what we are as humans. We can't be doing this. I think. So let's, let's create something. You know, we, they see that. I mean, they've been seeing warring, warring tribes and warring stuff all the time. If people see power, get power, they're going to, they're going to abuse it. So maybe that's, maybe that's why religion said, Hey, listen, if you don't act, you know, get your shit together, get, you you die, you're going to go to hell. So stop killing each other. Maybe that's where it came. Maybe it came out of a necessity. So we didn't get to the crazy, crazy place where you think we might get. I don't know. Religion 
exacerbated that, if anything, because like way back but when. But I'm saying maybe that was its intention. Now we're just looking at unintended consequences, but maybe it was intended to like, look, man, we got we got to figure. Let's let's try. Some, I don't I don't know. Well, think about this. A lot There's of religions are right like now. suffer here on Earth. And, like, you'll be rewarded in the afterlife. So that's a way for the people that control that message of religion to say, like, hey, we can make your lives as shitty as possible, but because we're promising you that if you put up with it for now, you might get rewarded in the future. It's like a form of control. Like, put up with your shitty slave lives and, like, don't revolt to us. And, like, one day you will have God and, like, all the riches that we have that you want but you can't have right now. Mm -hmm. So maybe in essence religion is, like, yes, but organized religion in practice, it's... If anything exacerbated that problem. Well, that's just more again when you well then when you get to organized religion, then you're starting to get into that power structure again. Exactly. Yeah. So organized religion and the essence of religion would be different. Cause I agree, like I guess it depends what religion, like the three major like uh Islam, Judaism, like I'm just saying that's the, different. Yeah, I'm just saying the religion the re, the the idea of religion before that before religion was an idea. Oh, okay. It's it, I think maybe that's where it's spurred from. Yeah, I'm talking to... thousands of years ago. They just said, you know what? We see, they came up with your same theory and said, mm -hmm. how do we stop this theory from coming to fruition? And maybe that's where religion spawned from. I don't know. Who knows? Like I said, I'm just, I'm just talking shit. I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that is it. But I don't know. Some whatever, know. however it's pure an idea, an idea it's not, is. It's not a bad idea, right? I feel like however pure an idea is, humanity will always find some way to like corrupt it along the way. Yeah. Like whatever your intentions are, like somewhere along the line, that's going to get fucked up like a game of telephone until you have something completely different. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But. Wow. You want to come back on the podcast? Sure. Yeah, I'm down. This was fun. This is you've got way too many smart things. I haven't had like this kind of nice, deep, fun conversation like this in a while in a while I'm, I'm, I've had great podcasts lately but I haven't had I, I like something like this every now and then it's just let's talk know. about the universe let's talk about sh deep shit yeah you know? that's yeah. what I want to do I'm down I'm down to come back I got you can be my resident Mensa guest oh I got it like you got questions like give me a topic I'll have it researched for the next time you're here and we can really? talk about it yeah shit yeah we damn near did three hours what time is it? We did two hours and 50 minutes. Holy shit. It's 930. Oh, my God. I had plans an hour and a half ago. Oh, do you mind if I reply to a text message? No, we're going to we can end this bitch real quick. OK, yeah, that would. I did not realize it had been that long. Time warp in here. Yeah, that was. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got to run home. Plus, you're lost in my beautiful brown eyes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um. So we're wrapping it up here. I cannot thank you enough for doing this. This was awesome for you to just come on some random dude's podcast that you know what it is just because I thought you were probably going to be smart. And I'm going to give you the floor here to pimp and say whatever you want. Boom, go. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Like, this was honestly one of the best conversations I've had in a minute. Like, this was fun and definitely a good first experience for my podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. Since I got this free time to, like, pimp or whatever, I assume this is going to be in your podcast just in case. www.artistkc.com. You know, if you're an artist, it's free. We help you out. Social media tool. We help you get established in the art community. Just hit us up. Oh, sorry. I had you look. I should have put the camera on. I've been so bad with the camera. <laughs> was it just looking at you the whole time? Yeah, but I mean, I, had, I mean, the ca there was a camera on. It, no, it looked natural. It oh, was okay. good. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to put out there, any people out there, I'm looking for a new producer. Basically, you just have to come in here and be able to click three or four different things on the mouse, and it's super easy, and you'll get to enjoy the podcast from a great view, get your hand in it, we'll get you on every now and then, and enjoy the festivities that uh, are partaken in the podcast. Drinks and drinks. Everybody, thank you for listening. Danny, I can't thank you much enough. This was awesome. Uh, that's it, everybody. Peace out. We're done.